From 2022 and onward, a group of passionate GTA fans have been diving deep into GTA 6 gameplay leaks, and what they discovered was wild. Their mission? They're trying to map out the entire landscape of GTA 6 before Rockstar Games even releases the official game. And guess what? They're actually making some serious headway. This is all about the ongoing GTA 6 mapping project. So how did this whole endeavor start anyway? It's an interesting story that not many folks are aware of. You see, there was a similar craze back when GTA 5 was announced. Back in 2011, a group of dedicated fans took it upon themselves to predict and sketch out the layout of GTA 5's terrain. How did they do this? By meticulously analyzing every single trailer that Rockstar Games dropped in the year leading up to the game's eventual release in 2013. The surprising part? When the game finally hit the shelves, a substantial chunk of what these fans had mapped out turned out to be surprisingly accurate. Sure, there were a few locations that were a bit inaccurate, like the military base being off and the dam placed in the wrong spot. Also, there were some variations in the overall shape of San Andreas, but considering they solely relied on Rockstar's official footage and had put in two years of work, their accuracy was pretty commendable. Now imagine this, if they could pull off that level of detail with just the trailers, think about what these enthusiasts could achieve with the leaked, under-the-radar stuff that slipped out prematurely. Plus, add in an extra year of combing through details and data. This mapping project is being led by a user called Dupzor, who is the project manager of this whole thing. On September 18th, 2022, when a massive leak dropped over 90 minutes of GTA 6 footage, the map enthusiasts went into full gear. While I can't exactly showcase the leaked content here, what really sparked the interest of the community were the coordinates embedded within the developer's HUD. These sneaky numbers revealed the exact whereabouts of the player concerning the game map. And let me tell you, GTA 6 fans wasted no time diving into this goldmine of information. With these coordinates in hand, the community went Sherlock Holmes mode, meticulously mapping out the game's terrain and identifying key locations. For instance, in one intriguing clip from the leaks, Lucia and Jason were caught in the act, robbing what seemed to be a Waffle House. This incident was marked by a simple white dot on their evolving map project. But it wasn't just a random dot, it was a significant clue. By cross-referencing the coordinates provided in this clip with other glimpses from the leaked footage, they managed to calculate the spatial relationships between different spots showcased in the leaks. This detective work allowed them to gauge distances and plot out the relative positioning of these places within the game world. However, it didn't stop there. The community didn't solely rely on leaked footage. They combined their detective skills with the official trailer, and using a blend of educated guesses and hard data, endeavored to include every conceivable road, building, and landmark featured in the GTA 6 map. The goal? To create a comprehensive and accurate representation of the game's virtual world based on all available tidbits of information. It's a fascinating process that demonstrates the dedication and passion of gaming communities in piecing together the puzzle of what to expect in GTA 6. Since the leaks hit, the GTA community has been on a mission, working tirelessly to piece together the game's map. Their focus has mainly been on sketching out the main areas, the cities, towns, and key landmarks. It's been quite a collective effort, with everyone trying to contribute and fill in the blanks based on whatever clues they could find. Then, the trailer dropped, and it was a whole new ball game. Among all the fast cars and flashy scenes, Rockstar slipped in a subtle surprise for the observant fans. After a few days of dissecting the trailer frame by frame, someone spotted it, a tiny image hidden in the bottom right corner of the ending screen. And guess what? It looked like a map snippet. Naturally, the community went into full detective mode. They put on their magnifying glasses and compared this mysterious map with the one they'd been building from the leaks. There were some similarities, especially with the layout of the right side and the presence of separate islands at the bottom, surrounded by water. But here's the catch. That image was pixelated to the max. It was like trying to figure out a puzzle with half the pieces missing. The lack of detail made it nearly impossible to confirm if it matched their map. This whole revelation sparked a heated debate among fans. Some folks started wondering if Rockstar deliberately threw this low-res map nugget to mess with their heads. Could it be that Rockstar is messing with the community, leading the GTA 6 mapping project into the wrong path? It's pretty odd for Rockstar to include this map as it was deliberately placed. When it comes to safeguarding the details of their upcoming games, Rockstar is notoriously tight-lipped. So, when those leaks dropped in 2022, it really threw a spanner in the works for the company. It's kind of a deja vu situation, considering a similar thing happened back when GTA 5 was in the spotlight. 
I can't help but wonder if Rockstar did this deliberately. You know, as a deliberate move to shake things up and keep everyone guessing. But then again, we, the GTA fans, are pretty good at concocting theories out of thin air. Now, about that mysterious, highly detailed artwork nestled in the official wallpaper, that's what's really piqued my interest. It's like this odd piece that stands out from the rest, making me think it wasn't just randomly thrown in there. There's gotta be some intention behind it, right? The big question swirling around is whether it's a sly misdirection or a subtle clue for the savvy gamers. But honestly, we won't get any answers until the game hits the shelves. Or maybe, if we're lucky, after another sneak peek in a new trailer. The GTA 6 mapping community dove headfirst into dissecting this artwork. But truth be told, there wasn't much to work with. So, they've been sticking to the stuff they can actually confirm. Oh, and those maps floating around, especially the ones from IGN and PC Gamer? They're more like creative interpretations. Think of them as speculative mock-ups cooked up by the mapping community based on their hunches and educated guesses. There's a whole lot of imagination at play there, but none of it has received the official stamp of confirmation. The GTA 6 mapping project might not be dropping any bombshells about unknown locations in the game, especially considering how the gameplay leaks already spilled quite a bit on what's in store. Now the heart of this community effort lies in the finer details. They're all about pinning down the exact spots where these landmarks and locations are going to be placed within the game's vast world. However, let's be real here. They've barely scratched the surface, covering roughly just 10% of the entire map. Still, kudos to them for the tremendous effort and progress they've managed to make with what they have. What's confirmed, though, is that this map in GTA 6 is going to be an absolute beast, nearly double the size of the already sprawling map in GTA 5. Alright, so in the GTA 6 trailer, there's this moment where this girl in a white bikini gets everyone talking, debating whether she's Lucia or not. She's chilling near this pool, taking in the Vice City skyline, and then she turns around. And let me tell you, there's a bunch of stuff to unpack there. Her hair moves all natural-like, swinging around as she turns. She's got these big hoop earrings, cool purple sunglasses, rocking a purple lipstick, and check out those nails, French tips. Oh, and there's this bracelet on her left wrist that catches the eye too. Now, here's the deal. Some folks are saying, nah, there is absolutely no way that is Lucia, or it just doesn't cross anyone's mind. Their argument? She looks different from how Lucia appeared in other shots, especially in that jumpsuit and during the whole crime spree with Jason. But hold up, there's a good chance that in GTA Online, customization's gonna be off the charts. Need a different haircut? No biggie, just swing by the in-game salon. Problem solved, so who knows? This bikini girl might just be a customized version of Lucia with a whole new look and vibe. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. You know, I'm pretty confident that it won't cause much trouble. Just like in GTA 5 or Red Dead Redemption 2, it feels like they'll let us switch up our characters' hairstyles again, which is pretty cool. Now, about this scene, it looks like it's happening at a totally different stage of the game. At the start, Lucia's all locked up in jail, doing those petty crimes and all. But in this snippet, she's looking like she's hit the jackpot. Loads of success and riches. There's more to this in the trailer, giving us a peek into what a thriving Lucia might look like. She's sporting a different hairstyle, dressed to the nines, hanging out in a fancy car with Jason behind the wheel. And to top it off, the girl's getting her photos taken by the paparazzi. Some folks out there are betting that this bikini girl is going to be the face of Rockstar's marketing strategy. You know, just like how they've always had that iconic female figure in their marketing since the good old days of GTA 3. So, putting it all together, it really seems like this bikini girl is Lucia. From the style to the little details like the various hairstyles, everything seems to point in that direction. It's exciting to get these glimpses of what Lucia's different phases might look like in the game. Rockstar's been doing this thing with the promo girls for ages, from the early days of GTA 3 to the more recent GTA 5. You might remember them. The girl in the bikini holding the martini glass, or the San Andreas girl leaning over at the Vinewood sign with those shades. They've always had these distinctive figures for their marketing. A bunch of people are pointing fingers at this bikini girl, saying she's the new Rockstar promo face. But I've got my money on Lucia. Take a look at those birthmarks and accessories, those little marks on her face and arm. They're pretty similar to what the bikini girl's got. Sure, some aren't super clear, but makeup or sun exposure could easily cover them up. And those earrings and bracelets? They match up pretty well with all the girls who look like Lucia, even if some shots might leave room for doubt? Like the one where she's driving that fancy car. I'm pretty convinced it's Lucia. Jason's checking her out. The accessories are a close match, and her facial structure lines up. Not to mention, her body shape, facial features, skin tone, hair length, and color, pretty much all of it lines up perfectly. In that scene, the way the bikini girl moves seems a bit forced, like she's intentionally flipping her hair or something. So maybe it's part of a mission, Lucia trying to blend in at some event to gather info, or pull off a heist. Or perhaps it's one of those moments where she's at the top of her game, all success 
successful and loaded. Oh, and that bikini she's wearing? It's from the Santano brand, which first showed up in GTA 5. So in GTA Online, we've got this whole range of clothing options, right? There are jackets, shoes, and some of them even parody luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, which is a real high-end clothing and accessories label. Now, some people are throwing around this theory that the bikini girl might be a returning character from the old GTA Vice City like Mercedes Cortez. But honestly, that's way off. Vice City was set in the 80s and GTA 6 is going to be in the present, like probably around 2023. So the timelines just don't add up. Even though this bikini girl looks a bit different and acts a bit like an influencer, I'm pretty convinced she's Lucia. She's got those same body features and face structure as Lucia. And Lucia's a game changer as the first leading lady in modern Rockstar games. Before her, female characters mostly played supporting roles or were just NPCs in GTA games, never the main focus. Rockstar tends to put a lot of effort into their main characters. The little differences like the sunglasses or lipstick don't bother me much. We know there'll be in-game stuff you can buy, like accessories. And hey, being able to change hairstyles was a big deal in games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5. So I'm pretty confident that the girl in that white bikini on that Vice City rooftop is Lucia. This video, we're delving into the most recent iteration of the GTA 6 mapping project. Our focus centers on a comprehensive analysis of the map's latest updates, incorporating newly unveiled areas and event coordinates derived from leaked information. Additionally, we will explore fresh insights from the initial official trailer, including the revelation of an accessible plaza. A noteworthy aspect we'll be dissecting is the potential expansiveness of the map, hinted at by newfound highway evidence in the trailer. Furthermore, we'll examine a conceptual representation illustrating the potential magnitude of the GTA 6 map. The trailer also provides a glimpse of Starfish Island, a detail we'll thoroughly cover in today's session. Let's initiate our examination by diving into the GTA 6 mapping project. For those not aware, this stands as the most extensive and refined community-driven mapping endeavor, aiming to deduce the GTA 6 map with the utmost accuracy. This endeavor leverages evidence from leaks and the primary official trailer. In our previous map analysis, we scrutinized significant alterations in the Borgorn and Grass Rivers areas, expanding the map to an impressive 18 by 8 kilometers. However, today's exploration will predominantly focus on alterations in the Vice City region. Rumors suggest that the GTA 6 map will encompass three major cities, with Vice City and Borgorn being the identified urban centers so far. Vice City, drawing inspiration from Miami, and Portglehorn, a fusion of Gulf cities in Florida. The speculated third city could possibly be modeled after Orlando or Tampa. Earlier rumors hinted at Yorktown being the third city, approximately aligning with Tampa's location. However, intriguingly, structures observed in leaked material from Portgorn were reminiscent of Panama City. Rockstar appears to amalgamate elements from distinct cities to craft a unique virtual landscape. Turning our attention specifically to Vice City, notable modifications are discernible in the stockyard and crossdown area. While these alterations may not be immediately apparent, a thorough comparison with the prior map iteration reveals notable changes in street layouts for improved connectivity. Building positions, including the relocation of the Jack of Hearts nightclub, featured in leaks and the trailer, signify significant shifts. Adjacent structures visible in the trailer's music video shoot scene have undergone subtle rearrangements. A noteworthy addition to the GTA 6 mapping project encompasses events gleaned from leaks, introducing a dynamic layer to our understanding of the evolving landscape. At present, we've pinpointed four events on the map, marked by light blue dots. These events include the missing persons poster at the liquor store, the big cat cage roof at Everyday Art Elephant, and the Everyday Art Sidewalk Creep, all clustered around the Crosstown SL Stockyard area. Meanwhile, there have been notable changes in the Vice River area, with some buildings rearranged and brought closer to the river. The overall shape of this area has also been altered, and a new marina building near the airport has been introduced, based on recent evidence. Another significant alteration concerns the incorporation of Ica and Belleville into Vice City. While their status remains speculative, with their names displayed in red, Ica is purportedly inspired by Alapata, a neighborhood in Miami-Dade, while Belleville draws parallels with Brownsville. Formerly perceived as small towns on the outskirts of Vice City, they're now considered part of the Vicedale neighborhoods, following fresh evidence. This reclassification potentially places scenes like the police officer pursuing the overweight individual in the Belleville neighborhood. Furthermore, a notable discovery linked to Tommy Versetti's mansion has surfaced. Star Island's inclusion in the game has been confirmed, evidenced by its appearance behind the Rockstar game's title, and in a scene featuring a bikini-clad woman. This revelation solidifies its status as a game location, with strong ties to the original Starfish Island from GTA Vice City, where Vercetti's estate was situated. The prospect of encountering the mansion in-game, whether as an accessible structure or an abandoned relic, remains uncertain but tantalizing. The mention of Star Island remains speculative, as indicated by its red font. 
leaving the possibility open for it to be renamed Starfish Island or something else. These developments encapsulate the latest updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Additionally, let's delve into a Reddit post that has garnered attention. I'm still very intrigued by the prospect. This is a full accessible plaza. The full access plaza featured in the trailer has piqued my curiosity. This snapshot is captured during a scene where Jason and Lucia evade the police momentarily. Positioned on the right side of the frame is a sign, presumably denoting a mall within the game. Notably, several brand names, including Kowalski, Kalis, Scala, and Alpha, are visible on this sign. Furthermore, a portion of the mall's name briefly appears, starting with Ever. Could it be Evergreen Plaza or another variation? The answer remains elusive, and we'll have to await further developments to unravel this mystery. I can pretty much bet on it that this shit will indeed be fully accessible. Most of the signs on that structure look to be clothing and accessory shops, which would easily mean it's accessible to us. I'm really hoping the mall makes a return in this one and will serve kind of as a player hub when online drops. Oh, that would be good. Maybe a spot where you can't attack. Could meet people to join up for races, heists, etc. That would be pretty neat. Now let's shift our focus to some additional findings that might provide evidence for the existence of the third major city in GTA 6. Furthermore, we'll explore why the actual map size of GTA 6 could potentially surpass the estimations derived from the mapping project. Possible map length. Since we don't know what's in the northern part of the map, and we're not sure if it ends where the current mapping project suggests, I thought the map could look something like this. I get that a map like this might be three, four times bigger than GTA 5, so it could be a lot, but we can't be sure about Rockstar's plans. I also think so, because on the east coast of the current map, we have Vice City's predicted beach areas going almost to the very top. Kind of feels like the map shouldn't just end there. And if Port Gellhorn is based on Fort Myers, then maybe Tampa and Orlando could be there too. But with the current borders, there's not enough space even for a small town. Also, shaped like this, the map would resemble actual Florida more. What do you think? Now, here's something to ponder. If the map indeed resembles this depiction, it would be quite astonishing. It's intriguing how the leaks have remained silent about the northern portion of the map. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. How far north do you speculate the map extends? Do you reckon it's just slightly beyond what's revealed in the map? project? Or could there be a substantial unseen territory? Shifting gears, let's delve into a significant discovery. An observation on the size of the map using highway exits as a guide. I believe that two blink and you'll miss them shots from the trailer, combined with something I saw in the leaks, have given us a serious hint as to just how big the map for GTA V said might turn out to be, specifically north-south. The first is the shot of the man grabbing his crotch while stopped on the side of the highway. Specifically, the highway exit signs in the background. They suggest that this shot is being taken from just north of exit 14 on the highway, if turning left has you going east and turning right has you going west. What's more, the GTA VSI mapping project believes that the highway that this shot is taken from is Interstate 97. Adding to this, there's this shot from earlier in the trailer of the woman in the gold dress, hanging out the top of a convertible traveling down I-404, heading towards a junction with 1, 97. At the very start of that clip, you can catch the exit number on the sign she's driving under. You can't see all of it, but to me, it looks more like exit 18 than exit 1B. This one is more speculative though. Now, I'm about to get into the leaks, so I can't post any pictures. There's a clip in the leaks of a red ute heading northbound on 1, 97 towards the exit 13 AB junction that takes one to Washington Beach and Ekanfinaka before crashing. The mapping project has been using the leaks to create their maps, and they've placed that stretch of 1, 97 north of Mr. Crotch Grab from the trailer, running through the stockyard neighborhood. This to me indicates that the highway exits are going to follow a realistic number pattern, with the number increasing or decreasing increasing for every mile traveled. The question is, where does this put exit 12? Exit 11? All the exits going up to 1? I've taken the latest version of the mapping project's map and pointed out where exits 14 and 13 are located. Then, extrapolating from there and using the map's grid as a handy guide, I drew where all the exits further down the numbering scheme might be located. I ran out of room to put exit numbers at hash 9. If 1, 97 is going to keep following the same numbering scheme all the way north until it hits exit 1, then it's likely that the map is going to be far bigger than we currently think it is, and what's been shown and plotted out so far. In fact, I think the only reason nothing's been plotted up there so far is because so much so far has focused on Vice City and its environs. One, 404 2 could wind up running just as far north, allowing for a few extra miles and exit numbers to accommodate it crossing the Everglades grass rivers before turning north, as I-75 in real life does. Bottom line, the map for this game is going to be enormous. There's been some chatter among you all about another potential scenario. The possibility of I-97 serving as a loop highway encircling the map's perimeter. 
Center, similar to GTA 5. While this is a valid consideration, I've largely dismissed it due to a straightforward reason. As previously mentioned, I-44 boasts exit numbers and highway markers that suggest its considerable length, likely extending westward until it reaches the Gulf of Mexico before veering north, mimicking the real-life trajectory of I-75. If the map's northern boundary remains close to its current cutoff point and I-97 extends west and south extensively, then it's plausible that I-44 would mirror this pattern in the opposite direction. While the notion of two loop highways isn't entirely implausible, it could potentially introduce redundancy. Additionally, in GTA 5, the Loop Highway wasn't simply labeled under one name. The segment along the coast was dubbed the Great Ocean Highway, while the inland stretch traversing the desert was referred to as the Sonora Freeway. Moreover, within Los Santos, various freeways possess distinct names and numbers, even when merging seamlessly, such as the Del Perro, La Puerta, and La Mesa freeways. My hypothesis currently is that there is a Loop Highway, but that one, 97 and I-404, are two halves of it. They both start in Vice City and intersect in Crosstown. One, 97 runs up the Atlantic coast. One, 404 runs west through the Grass Rivers, and then turns north to run up the Gulf Coast, and they both meet at a point further north. The GTA 6 community has just found some major clues left by Rockstar Games, and it was under our nose the whole time. GTA 6's Trailer 1 revealed a ton of new things about the game off the bat, but recently, there's been even more developments that show off the GTA 6 main character story, Lucia. We learn a bunch of new things about her background, so if you're not interested in potential spoilers, this may not be the video for you. This information is directly from Rockstar Games, so this is the real deal. So getting into the details of Lucia's jail cell, let's focus on those newspaper clippings. I'll do my best to zoom in and enhance the image, but there are two distinct white clippings with black text. One of them appears to have a portrait, and I can only speculate that it might resemble a modern-day wanted poster. This could be showcasing the story of Lucia's alleged crime, accompanied by an image like a visual representation of what she's accused of. It's almost akin to a wanted picture that you'd find in a newspaper. This phenomenon isn't unheard of in real life. When people do something noteworthy or newsworthy, it's not uncommon for them to keep a record of it, like an article, and put it up on their wall as a sort of memento. It's like a snapshot of a moment in their life, even if it involves legal trouble. So Lucia might be preserving this particular newspaper clipping as a piece of her history, whether it's for sentimental reasons or perhaps as a reminder of the circumstances that led to her incarceration. Now let's broaden the scope a bit and draw comparisons to previous GTA protagonists. Take Michael DeSanta, for instance. His mansion has family photos on the walls. Franklin Clinton's house features similar personal touches. Even Trevor Phillips, in his trailer, has pictures that tell a story about his life. It's not just confined to the HD era. Even in the 3D era games, characters had their own way of leaving traces of their lives in their living spaces. This inclination to personalize living spaces is fascinating. In Lucia's case, the jail cell is an unexpected canvas for her personal story. It makes you wonder about her background, the choices she made, and the events that led her to that cell. Exploring these details could give us a deeper understanding of who she is and why she's in the predicament we find her in. Considering Lucia's attachment to those newspaper clippings, it raises interesting questions about her attitude towards her crimes. Perhaps she finds a sense of pride or even enjoys the bit of notoriety or fame she's garnered from her actions. Keeping those clippings might be her way of cherishing the attention or recognition she's received. The prospect of spending a substantial amount of time in prison also suggests that it could involve more than just a brief cutscene, but potentially a series of missions within the jail environment. Now, shifting our attention to the picture above the bunk bed, it's a bit of a visual puzzle. While it's challenging to discern details, on the left side, there's a guy with a drink in hand, donning a white t-shirt. Next to him is a woman with voluminous hair, and in the foreground, there's another figure. This composition raises the question of whether these individuals could be Lucia's family. The dynamics and connections between characters are often crucial in unraveling the narrative of any GTA game. Acknowledging my limited knowledge about jail life, it's uncertain whether inmates generally have the privilege of keeping photographs with them as mementos. However, in this specific scenario, it appears that Lucia can. This might imply that the prison depicted isn't a maximum security facility, given the freedom for inmates to keep personal items. While the setting is far from casual, it offers a level of interaction and mobility, allowing inmates to go outside, engage in conversations, sit at tables, and soak in sunlight. The orange jumpsuits signify their status, but the absence of being handcuffed to the ground suggests a certain level of relative freedom. In this context, the allowance of pictures and photographs 
could offer an additional layer of insight into the characters and their personal connections, providing players with a unique perspective on Lucia's life, both inside and outside the jail cell. Taking a closer look at the latest image, which I've adjusted to bring out more details, there's another intriguing photograph. A guy in an orange shirt catches the eye, positioned alongside two women on the right. The one on the left appears to be sporting a hat and sunglasses, although discerning whether any of them is Lucia remains challenging. They could very well be family members, close friends, or simply individuals from her social circle. Amidst all the uncertainty, Lucia seems notably fixated on reflecting upon her actions and the community's response. Beyond this, it's evident that Lucia maintains a distinct connection with a specific group of people, as indicated by the presence of their pictures in her jail cell. It's not just about her individual experience. There's a shared history captured in those photographs, hinting at relationships that go beyond the confines of the jail cell. Directly below the image featuring the guy in the orange shirt and the other girls, there's yet another photograph. Although the details are obscured, the presence of someone standing in the picture is noticeable. Lucia is seemingly constructing a collage of photos, creating a visual narrative that serves as a repository of memories. These images might play a crucial role in not only grounding her within the context of her relationships, but also providing a semblance of continuity and connection to the outside world. It's worth mentioning that the footage I'm working with is the highest quality version sourced from YouTube, as Rockstar hasn't officially released it on their Newswire page. Despite being in 4K, the YouTube upload might introduce some compromises in image quality, so there could be nuances in the pictures that we might miss. Once Rockstar throws the official trailer our way, we're likely to get a treasure trove of additional details. But for now, let's roll up our sleeves and dissect the snapshots from Lucia's jail cell. Apart from Jason, there's another player in Lucia's story. Stephanie, the Leonid Department of Corrections representative. Picture a different scene, though. Lucia's cell is a far cry from Stephanie's office. In this particular shot, Stephanie's unmistakably holding down the fort in a black dress, center stage on the right. Flip to the left frame, and there she is again, donning a red dress on the right side. Behind her, there's a framed message teasing with, if you miss, but the rest remains a mystery due to some pesky screen glare. Now, let's make a full turn, and voila, another Stephanie pick in the bottom right corner. This time, the backdrop suggests a domestic scene, perhaps with a partner. She's got on some bluish shades, slightly different from what we catch a glimpse of later. The background paints a more vivid picture, a collection of books, pamphlets, a conspicuous high-visibility vest, and yet another potential newspaper clipping. Whether it's a routine thing or an anomaly, the jury's still out. So, what's the inside scoop on Lucia's backstory gleaned from her jail cell environment? Well, the state of the jail suggests it's seen better days. Peeling bits off the windows, hint at a place with some history. That initial shot with the barbed wire strongly implies it's not a newly minted spot. It's got the wear and tear of time etched into its surroundings. As we immerse ourselves in the intricacies of Lucia's life within the jail cell, the narrative unfolds as a captivating tapestry, each element contributing to the rich story. The subtleties, from the cryptic newspaper clippings, shedding light on her alleged crimes to the carefully chosen photographs, depicting relationships with family and friends, create a vivid and compelling portrait of Lucia's existence, both within and beyond the jail confines. The personal touches within her confined space evoke a rawness that harks back to the legacy of previous GTA protagonists. Lucia's jail cell, unexpectedly, becomes a canvas revealing a story that transcends the conventional GTA narrative. It prompts curiosity about her past, the decisions that led her to incarceration, and the intricate web of relationships that define her. The permission granted for personal items like photographs in the jail cell adds an intriguing layer to the storytelling, suggesting a nuanced sense of freedom within the constraints of imprisonment. Lucia's attachment to these items, whether they be newspaper clippings or family snapshots, beckons players to ponder her perspective on her own actions and the recognition she may have garnered. While we eagerly await the official trailer release from Rockstar, it is clear that Lucia's story is woven with complexities and mysteries that leave us yearning for more. The weathered appearance of the jail environment, with peeling bits off the windows and subtle signs of aging, hints at a setting steeped in history, amplifying the anticipation for the unfolding narrative. Thus, with these glimpses into Lucia's world, we find ourselves surrounded by a plethora of unanswered questions. When did she find herself behind bars, and what duration does her stay entail? Your insights are eagerly awaited in the comment section. If this exploration into Lucia's jail cell has piqued your interest, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Comment down below what you believe caused Lucia to go to jail. 
And did you spot these hidden Easter eggs in the trailer on your first watch? I'm interested to hear back from you guys. I'll be discussing the recent developments in the GTA 6 mapping project. We'll delve into the latest additions, including new locations featured in Trailer 1, adjustments to existing locations, refinements in certain areas, and exciting discoveries from the latest trailer, such as the yacht interior, surfboards, princess robot bubblegum, and more. Let's start by examining the mapping project itself. It's been some time since our last update on this front, and there have been notable changes to the map since then. This iteration represents the most recent version of the GTA 6 mapping project, spearheaded by Dupi's Zero R. Below, you'll find a roster of individuals who have contributed to this endeavor, and it's worth noting that this list has been recently updated. This project stands as the largest and most comprehensive effort within the fan community, with the goal of predicting the map of GTA 6 as accurately as possible prior to its official unveiling. DuPZ's Zero R mentioned that there's still an extensive list of elements to incorporate and modify, but for now, this update suffices. Anticipate further alterations to the map in subsequent updates. This iteration represents the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. Notable adjustments have been made to the legend and the manner in which various elements are annotated on the map. All markers now include viewing cones to indicate their general viewing direction. However, it's important to note that the angle of these cones is merely symbolic. Additionally, speculative location markers have been updated with red outlines to differentiate them from non-location markers. Furthermore, coordinate markers now display their corresponding clip names for easier identification. Changes have also been made to the naming conventions in the key section. For instance, you'll notice that the markers now include the names of the clips they are derived from. Let's delve into the alteration specific to Vice City. The angles of Rock Ridge and Stockyard have been tweaked to align with calculations slash evidence and to better match the coordinates. By observing the outlines, you can see that both the Rock Ridge and Stockyard areas have been subtly adjusted, ensuring a more cohesive layout. There's a noticeable improvement in alignment. A notable update to the map is this section here. Previously, absent features have been incorporated from the edges of one of Rock Ridge's mini-maps, and adjustments have been made to the water's edge in that vicinity now depicted in dark green to indicate the genuine boundaries of this section of the Vice River. Additionally, several buildings in the Rock Ridge area have been identified, including the Rock Ridge Community Research Center, Miami Police Department, Venture Apartments, Orange and Pink, 7071 Warren Thacker Manor, inspired by Martin Fine Villa, Palace Cafe and Diary, all sourced from leaks. Furthermore, there are two speculative markers outlined in red, representing locations from the trailer. One in Rock Ridge is speculated to be the Hammer Hamlet Ladies location, while the other marks the high roller scene from the trailer. You can find the timestamps for both scenes on the map. Updates have been made to the route of the I-404, incorporating new evidence. This includes adjustments in Vice Beach and the positioning of the road near Rock Ridge. Notably, there have been alterations to the highway section near the airport. Additionally, speculative terrain and building positions in Washington Beach have been revised to align more closely with the evidence. Changes have been made to the shapes and locations of the Ritz-Carlton Bal Harbor, Akoya Condos, and Jade Ocean Condos. Furthermore, alongside the speculative road and landmass in the Bayfront Heights area, the Y Vice City and Gate Slash Continental Hotels have been included in the Vice Beach vicinity. Additionally, several minor adjustments and fixes have been implemented. Regarding the Vice Beach area, there have been additions of new buildings supported by recent evidence. These include 200 Ocean Drive, 260 Ocean Drive, 1043 Washington Avenue, Beach Park Hotel, and Council Towers North. Moreover, over at Brickle Key Island, two new buildings, Brickle Key 1 and Brickle Key 2, have been introduced. Additionally, corrections have been made to the names of the Tequesta Point locations, accurately reflecting their respective positions. Now, let's shift our focus away from Vice City. Firstly, an error regarding St. Joseph has been rectified. Previously labeled in purple, it should have been marked in red to signify that this name hasn't been confirmed in the leaks, but is either speculative or based on real-life data. Moving westward towards Port Gellhorn, there have been notable additions to the leaked industrial area opposite the state prison, along with improvements to the prison itself. Several speculative structures, highlighted in red, including a water tower and industrial buildings, have been incorporated, along with a cell tower across from the prison. Heading south to the Keys, significant improvements have been made. Adjustments to the landmass near the camera location, where the shot with the Dodal seaplane occurs, have been made based on speculative evidence. 
An airbase slash runway has been added, along with guard booth and barriers visible in the trailer. Additionally, two speculative buildings marked in red, as well as the speculative naval area station, have been included. That wraps up all the updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Share your thoughts in the comments below. There have been some significant changes with this update. But now, let's shift our attention to the discoveries made in the trailer. I also wanted to touch on these findings in this video. This marks the initial Reddit post. In the GTA 6 trailer, you can see through the yacht windows and see the interior even though it's very far away. However, in GTA 5, you can't at all see the interior even from close up. We will probably get inside the yacht and maybe even houses, or at least see inside it. In the shot of the Venetian island, it's evident that there will be a high density of yachts. It seems that the boats will be easily accessible, and based on the leaked shot featuring Jason on a boat from 2022, it's probable that players will have the freedom to enter, drive, and explore yachts like the catamaran seen in the opening scene of the trailer. Now, on to the next discovery, surfboards. Know a lot of people been talking about surfing, and while there's still nothing indicating it being an interactive mini-game surfboards, are in-game and seen in the trailer. Surfboards were in five, but only on the tops of certain cars, and a few static ones sat the beach. What do you all think? Will surfboards act as decorations like they were in five? Or will it be a fully fledged minigame? Personally, I'm not fully convinced yet, but if NPCs do have actual schedules slash lives, I can't see things like surfboards just being static, especially at the beach. My guess is we'll see NPCs bring their own items to and from the beach, including surfboards, but the interactiveness is still in question. From the leaks, there hasn't been any information indicating that surfing will be an interactive activity in the game. Nonetheless, there have been numerous articles discussing this possibility, like the one mentioned here. Major GTA 6 leak allegedly hints at surfing to debut in series. The upcoming GTA 6, officially untitled, leaks are becoming more frequent and interesting, with a recent one revealing that the upcoming title will include new water sports, such as surfing. According to a report by the Dexerto Gaming website, a leaker named Alix Venturas revealed on Twitter that Rockstar Games plans to improve the water physics in Grand Theft Auto 6 and will introduce several water-based activities. While the gaming studio has not officially commented on the leak, players are convinced, given that Grand Theft Auto 6 will almost certainly feature Vice City, a fictional version of Miami, Florida, known for its beaches and water activities. However, it's important to note that these rumors haven't been confirmed by either the official leaks or the trailer. It remains to be seen whether these surfboards will merely serve as decorations. There's been quite a buzz about Jason, one of the main leads in the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. People are spinning theories left, right, and center, suggesting he might be an undercover cop, an agent, an ex-cop, or even someone with a military background. It's been the talk of the town ever since the first official trailer dropped. Now, I've got to warn you, what we're about to discuss might just spoil a bit of the GTA 6 storyline for you. But hey, if you've been keeping tabs on the GTA 6 grapevine, chances are you've already heard murmurs about these theories. Now, I gotta stress, folks, that as exciting as these speculations are, they're just that. Speculations. Nothing set in stone. But here's the deal. There are some interesting things in Jason's outfit, from certain glimpses in the trailers, and Rockstar's promotional stuff, that sort of fuel these speculations. They're like breadcrumbs teasing us about Jason's potential undercover identity. So today, I'm here to unravel these clues and take you through the evidence we've got so far. We'll start with the very first trailer of Grand Theft Auto 6. You know, the one that set the internet on fire? We'll dissect it bit by bit and get into the nitty gritty of this theory that's got the GTA 6 community all hyped up. And it's not just about the trailers, folks. Oh no, there's a whole treasure trove of articles out there discussing findings made by fans, diving into details, and connecting dots. We're gonna sift through all that too. And hey, while we're at it, let's not forget about the actors. There's been some chatter about who might be stepping into the shoes of Jason in this game. So we'll toss that into the mix as well. There's plenty to unravel, and we're here to explore every nook and cranny of this speculation, piece by piece. So grab your favorite snack, get comfy, because we're about to embark on a journey through the GTA 6 speculations, theories, and rumors about Jason. Let's start off by jumping into this interesting Reddit post. I've seen some speculation that Jason is an undercover cop makes sense since we see first-person gameplay of a police raid. I'm guessing he falls in love with Lucia, and his storm between his duty and his love could be not true, but it seems like it would be a good twist in something Rockstar would do. Okay, let's take a deeper dive into this scene where we encounter these four police officers. 
They're pretty unmistakably cops with that distinct police badge on their body armor. It's crucial to note the small details here, especially regarding their attire, as it might hold some key information. Now, among this squad of officers, there's one guy who stands out from the rest. He's chilling on the far right, sporting a casual white tank top, while the others are all suited up in body armor, their caps turned backward. This difference suggests a hierarchy within the group, making us wonder if this dude's perhaps a higher up or holds a different position within the force. The intriguing part, though, is the context of this scene. It feels like a pivotal moment, almost as if these officers are significant characters in the narrative. But let's pump the brakes a bit. It's all speculation at this point. We can't be certain of their importance or their roles in the storyline just yet. Now, let's loop this back to Jason, the main focus of our attention. There's a striking connection here. The cop on the far right and the one in the middle, both sporting these distinct olive green cargo pants. These pants seem to be a part of their uniform, something that catches the eye. But here's the twist. The same style of cargo pants is seen on Jason in the official Grand Theft Auto 6 artwork released by Rockstar. Coincidence? Maybe, but it feels like too much of a match to ignore. What's up with these pants? Is it a fashion trend among the police force in the GTA 6 universe? Or could it be hinting at a deeper connection between these officers and our protagonist Jason? The plot thickens, and we're left to ponder the significance of these subtle visual cues. Is there a backstory linking these officers to Jason? Or is it merely a design choice by the creators to establish a visual pattern? We're left with questions, my friends. Questions that make us itch to uncover more about this intriguing storyline. So, buckle up as we continue this investigation, piecing together clues and theories, aiming to decipher the enigmatic links between these officers and our mysterious main character, Jason. There's a whole world of possibilities waiting to be explored within the realm of Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into this article by Exputer that further supports this rumor. GTA 6 fans have been busy digging into the lore of both protagonists since the trailer dropped. It appears that users may already have found notable details about Jason. A slew of forums and posts have popped up with speculations with evidence that complies with prior findings. A post by the Redditor, Jack underscore Torrance 80, on the GTA 6 subreddit, solidifies the past rumors that clarified that Jason would start the game as a cop. The pants worn by the protagonist in the GTA 6 poster are a part of the official uniform of Miami-Dade Police. The green cargo pants are the same color used by the Miami-Dade Police SWAT team. Additionally, the inclusion of body cam footage in the trailer may also imply his past background as a cop. It is speculated that he was dismissed from the service during the events of the game, having to continue his life as a petty thief. In the side-by-side -side comparison, you'll notice something intriguing. Those pants on the right in the image are an exact match to the ones worn by those police officers in the trailer clip. The detailing with those black bands and the gun holsters, it's all there. But here's where it gets interesting. Jason, in the official artwork, doesn't seem to have any of those gun holsters. It's as if he decided to part ways with that gear when he left the police force, holding onto only those distinctive pants. Now, about that white tank top he's sporting in the artwork, it bears a striking resemblance to the one worn by the cop, positioned on the far right in that clip. It's these little connections that make you wonder if there's more to it than meets the eye. Could it be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past, subtly linking him to the law enforcement world? Or is it just a coincidence? In the comments of the Reddit post, a user says, he is probably a dismissed cop or soldier, got too desperate and started to do petty crimes. Lucia brings him the local connections and scores, and he uses his former police training skills in weaponry and vehicles, a dismissed corrupt cop or soldier, a freshly out of jail ex-prisoner. Victor Vance and Tommy Versetti. And there could be more parallels between these two pairs of characters if you think about it. Vic was being betrayed again and again in his storyline. When he finally decided to quit, his brother pushed him to enter another deal with Tommy, which eventually killed him. Tommy, on the other hand, is a more cunning and ambitious person. He promised Rosenberg to leave him a piece of his Vice City Empire, but later abandoned him and left him exiled in Las Venturas. These observations really bring up some compelling comparisons, especially when looking at Tommy Vercetti and Victor Vance from previous GTA installments. There's a chance we might see echoes of similar themes or storylines reflected in GTA 6, which lines up nicely with what Rockstar teased in the trailer. Let's zero in on Jason's haircut. It's clean cut and short, a style often associated with law enforcement or military personnel. That detail might not be just a coincidence. 
It could be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past as an ex-cop or someone with a military background. It adds an extra layer of depth to his character, don't you think? I'm genuinely interested in hearing your take on this theory. There is a lot of evidence supporting this theory, and it might be a major deal as we might be working with the police possibly in GTA 6. That would be a completely new gameplay element in the GTA series, so we have a lot to look forward to. Tell me what are your thoughts and opinions about Jason's potential background, whether he's linked to law enforcement or not, as it could shed more light on this intriguing speculation. We're diving into an upcoming terrain system in GTA 6, brought to you by Rockstar Games. Additionally, we'll explore some cool graphics enhancements like ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting slated for the next GTA. The scoop comes straight from an official patent filed by Take-Two Interactive Rockstar's parent company. So let's kick things off by checking out the patent titled Method and Apparatus for Enhanced Graphics Rendering in a Video Game Environment. According to Rockstar Games, the rendering of real-time graphics usually happens in a pipeline setup like this one. At the core of it, the process kicks off by handling 3D vertex information, moving on to render pixel-level details like light color and shadows. In the current systems, one or more shaders are employed for this pixel-level rendering. These shaders are essentially programs that operate on the GPU. The challenge in rendering lies in finding the right balance between realism and detail, while ensuring smooth performance, aiming for that higher frame rate. For example, a virtual world should illustrate various terrains that mirror a number of lifelike geographical areas. Each of these terrains can provide unique interactions with a virtual character in the video game. By way of example, a virtual player traveling through sand or snow should leave footprints that are different than the virtual player walking down a concrete sidewalk. However, because of the number of various terrains that need be accounted for, and the unique behavior of each terrain, Conventional graphics systems do not have enough processing power to account for dynamic terrain and the associated interaction with players of the game. So, Rockstar Games developed a shader system for efficiently rendering various types of terrain with high realism. Let's take a peek at the system. The world level map, visible in the bottom right, outlines all the different dynamic terrains, such as muddy, sandy, grassy, hard ground, snowy, and more. Take a gander at this world level map showcasing the diverse terrains. Now, let's explore the various dynamic terrain zones within the game world. Using Red Dead Redemption 2 as an illustration, this world level map plays a pivotal role in determining the terrain that players or NPCs interact with. Essentially, it acts as the foundation to generate a trail map. Think of a trail map as a record of all the imprints left behind by characters, vehicles, and other objects, like the aftermath of explosions. Take this image, for instance, showcasing how the snow has been altered by the actions of this NPC. Different shaders of the shader system are used for different terrain types and with different trail map types. For example, basic terrains do not require special shaders, while shallow mud terrains can advantageously benefit from a parallax surface shader to efficiently show ruts and tracks in the terrain with a high detail trail map. As an additional example, deep mud terrain may use a tessellation surface shader to model the ruts and tracks in the mud. You might be aware that in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can leave realistic footprints in the snow and mud. Rockstar explained that they employ two shaders for this effect parallax maps, and desolation. These shaders create a convincing illusion of high-level deformation, where footprints appear on the terrain's surface. In reality, the surface is warped, but not physically deformed, ensuring a smooth and polished movement experience. In GTA 6, they're applying the same technique to bring an extra layer of realism. This will be particularly noticeable with explosions, firing RPGs at the ground, walking through mud, or driving vehicles through it, each leaving distinct tracks based on the terrain. RPGs, for instance, will create crazy on the ground. This adds a significant level of interactivity, making it feel like you're genuinely impacting the game world in real time. Despite it being an illusion, the result will be remarkably realistic, akin to the snow in Red Dead Redemption 2. To sum it up, this graphics rendering patent encompasses the dynamic terrain, ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting, all exciting new features making their way to GTA 6. Rockstar has invented and patented new graphics rendering systems, which aims to fix some of the problems of traditional graphics rendering systems to make graphics rendering more efficient, thus improving performance and allowing for better, more realistic, and more immersive visuals. Dynamic Terrain System. This is a system that records and creates trail maps which make it possible that terrains can be visually deformed when being interacted with in various ways. Players, NPCs, vehicles, objects, and explosions can affect the terrain. For example, leaving footprints or vehicle tracks in sand can be seen in action in Trailer 1. Explosions will leave craters in the terrain as well. It's also possible for certain changes to the terrain to disappear over time. For example, footprints and tracks in mud disappearing after some time since the visibility 
viscosity of mud makes it return to its normal state after some time. There are different types of terrains, for example, muddy, sandy, hard ground, grassy or snowy terrain. Each type of terrain will react differently. A sandy terrain will be more easily deformed than a grassy terrain, for example. In the initial part of our video, we delved into the rendering pipeline, which also incorporates a lighting stage. While conventional systems often utilize cube maps for pre-rendering lighting, it's worth noting that this is mainly for static elements. When it comes to dynamic characters, pre-computed lighting falls short in accommodating changes from objects within the scene. Although ambient occlusion can be pre-baked, it lacks the capability to update dynamically. Realism takes a hit due to this. Conventional systems often incorporate static lights to mimic reflected light, like sunlight bouncing off the ground and under a table. However, this static approach fails to update with changes in the light source. To address these challenges, Rockstar has patented new systems. Ambient Occlusion. This is a graphics technique that can be utilized in multiple forms to determine how light and shading are displayed on an object. It can lead to darkened areas, enhanced contrast, and improved surfaces due to this technology. This patent's Ambient Occlusion system offers some special advantages. Determined by either preset or randomized assets based on developer discretion, the lighting can greatly provide a new vision to world building to make certain areas stand out, akin to a real-life setting. Global Illumination Global Illumination is a graphics rendering technique that models how light is bounced off of surfaces onto other surfaces in direct light, rather than being limited to just the light that hits a surface directly from a light source, direct light. Rockstar system detailed in this patent uses a bounce map that is projected in a top-down fashion to determine reflected light off of the ground. This bounce map is then converted into a texture that provides an approximation for the expected bounce back of light. This simulates the effect that would be achieved rendering the multiple passes of lighting to account for the natural bounce reflections. The bounce map can then be integrated into the lighting pipeline. During this, a technique is used to determine the area that needs this extra pass for each frame. This way, only the visible and required area is rendered with this technique thus making it very efficient and less performance intensive. Overall, this provides many of the benefits of ray tracing without the computational expense. Ray traced global illumination will probably still be in the game. For example, Lucia prison clip in trailer one. This special system is just a way to render large scale global illumination efficiently. Now, let's touch on the final problem that Rockstar has addressed through this patent with conventional systems. Finally, as another example, to develop a rich and engaging game world, it is advantageous to populate the world with variations of similar objects. In other words, you do not want every simulated person, cow, gun, car, cart, ship, or animal generated in the game to look the same. Because the 3D model for many of these objects would be identical, variation was traditionally accomplished by creating different texture files to paint a different look on the object. For example, two variants of a cow model could be created, one with a texture to create a brown cow, and the other with a texture to create a black cow. These prior art systems created the desired variety at the cost of artist time, computer memory, and resources to maintain a multitude of different hand-authored variants for each in-game object. To combat this, Rockstar is introducing material tinting. RDR2 had a system that could tint the color of clothes to create far more variations on NPCs. This new patent is an evolution of that system and allows for creating of several in-game object variants from a single model. It can not only modify an object's colors, but other material properties, such as metalness and lighting parameters, or add additional layers to it, such as mud, snow, or dust as well. Envision the extent of customization that awaits in this game. Summing up the official patent for graphics rendering, it's evident that Rockstar has elevated numerous systems from Red Dead Redemption 2. We're delving into the character creation aspect of Grand Theft Auto 6 and exploring how in-game NPCs will be generated. We'll take a look at a recent patent filed by T2 Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games, which sheds light on the character creation process within the world of GTA 6. The patent reveals details about a new system developed by Rockstar Games, designed to streamline character creation and leverage the capabilities of current generation consoles more effectively. As game worlds grow in size and complexity, filling them with diverse and compelling characters and environments becomes increasingly challenging. Artists are tasked with creating every individual in-game object, from characters to buildings and interiors. As these worlds expand, the computational and design efforts required also increase. However, Rockstar Games has once again demonstrated innovation by developing a system that optimizes the rendering of 3D objects, ensuring efficiency without compromising on detail. This system addresses the challenges posed by the ever-expanding scope of game worlds. The patent we're examining in this video is titled System and Method for Game Object and Environment Generation. 
This video takes a deep dive into the generation of building interiors and characters within the expansive world being crafted by Rockstar Games. The patent starts off by providing an overview of how objects function within 3D spaces, as explained by Rockstar. Objects used in 3D graphics, often called assets, are a combination of geometry data, for example, the 3D model, and data for textures associated with the geometry data. An asset may be formed of one object, or it may be a composite object made from a combination of objects. The objects that form a composite object may in different contexts be used as independent assets unrelated to the composite object, or they may always be used as a subset of a larger object. They've provided an intro to how 3D objects function in games, aiming to help us grasp the workings of their latest invention. Persons of skill in the art will recognize that many different sorts of assets, such as vehicles, can be made from collections of subcomponents. For example, one aspect of the game might require a room, say a dining room. That entire dining room could be considered one game asset, but it will likely be created from several other assets, such as a table, chairs, dishes, glasses, wallpaper, flooring, etc. The glasses and chairs are independent of the larger dining room asset. As another example, a virtual person in the game, such a background character in a scene, would also be an asset. A person asset might be made up of a number of interchangeable objects, such as legs, a torso, arms, a head, etc. Because the person is made up of interchangeable objects, a variety of different persona sets can be made by mixing and matching different constituent parts. But a body part like a torso might always be used as a subpart of a larger body object. Prior art systems generally include libraries of game assets. The systems and methods of the present disclosure add a metadata layer to these game asset systems and provide modified development and game architectures to take advantage of the new metadata layer. This metadata layer includes tags that are added to the object in order to provide useful descriptors. In a preferred embodiment, these descriptors are completely freeform and without context. This allows developers to specify information about objects as needed without having to be locked into a ridge pre-configured schema. Rockstar's new system introduces an additional metadata layer and utilizes tags for enhanced functionality. In the next section, they provide examples illustrating how this tagging system will operate. For instance, characters and virtual beings within the game world will be assigned tags like skinny, chubby, average, attractive, ugly, young, old, and so on. They explain that this tagging system won't just apply to the 3D models or textures alone, but to the entire object package, which includes the model and its associated textures. Essentially, every aspect of a particular character will be tagged. For example, skin textures for elderly characters will be tagged as old, while arms and torsos for heavier characters will be tagged as chubby. They also list other tag examples provided by Rockstar, such as sporty, hipster, emo, preppy, nerdy, luxury, basic, new, worn out, business, and formal. Moreover, each component can have its own tag, and there can even be collections of assets with tags. Furthermore, they explain that all these assets can be stored on servers for easy developer access via an application programming interface, API. Additionally, these assets can be stored in various formats like XML, limited text, binary encoding, relational databases, and others, depending on the developer's proficiency. The systems and methods of the present disclosure further advantageously use the metadata via a rule set layer that uses the metadata to increase the speed and efficiency of game rendering, world or scene creation, game script execution, and rendering fidelity. In particular, the rule set allows designers to add context to the tags and to control their use by setting rules for the asset usage and the asset's interaction with the game and other objects. These rules are unrestricted and can be used to provide a wide variety of different capabilities and restrictions for objects. Let's take a look at how these tags will be put into action. For instance, if a jacket object is created, a tag like additional top garment can be assigned to it. Then, during gameplay, certain rules might search for this specific tag to identify objects like jackets. Furthermore, in a cold setting, the character's health stat may decrease at a slower rate because the character stays warm with the additional top garment. Moreover, the additional top garment tag could enhance rendering efficiency. For instance, if a character wears a shirt underneath a jacket, the shirt occupies memory space. Since the shirt is mostly covered by the jacket, Rockstar plans to replace the full shirt with a smaller texture, only containing the visible parts under the jacket, thus conserving memory. The combination of tags and the rule set can also be used advantageously for procedural generation of game objects and environments. For example, 
A game scene could be created in a game script by calling assets based on tags, rather than calling the assets explicitly. For example, if the game scene called for virtual characters in a movie theater, the game designer could simply specify a need for predetermined X number of characters with casual dress. If the designer wanted a sci-fi movie playing at the theater, it might also call for a higher percentage than normal of characters tagged nerdy. The metadata rule set interface would interpret these general instructions at game runtime to randomly generate virtual characters fulfilling those needs. Additionally, this system offers increased efficiency. For instance, the entire character object doesn't need to be packaged before streaming to the GPU for processing. Instead, they can be generated directly on the GPU using existing model and texture assets. Of course, Rockstar aims to utilize as many preloaded GPU textures as possible while maintaining a realistic variety in the scene. Moreover, this system allows them to control the number of preloaded textures used in a scene. For instance, more textures can be preloaded for complex scenes and fewer for simpler ones. The goal of this video is to provide an overview of the key aspects of this new system, so I won't delve into every example described in the patent. Turning to the details of the specified metadata, in a particularly advantageous embodiment, the following metadata is included for each model and texture, IDs, property tags, match tags, randomization restrictions, expression data, and optimization data. While this selection of metadata has been found advantageous, different groupings and subsets of these tags can be mixed and matched as needed to accomplish particular design goals without departing from the spirit and advantages of the present disclosed inventions. The uses, embodiments, and benefits of each of these fields are described as follows. These elements constitute the metadata, and while I won't delve into each one individually, they essentially represent the various tagging methods Rockstar employs to organize models and textures. These tags facilitate accurate and efficient filtering and sorting of assets within the virtual world. Taking a deeper dive into GTA 6, we find out new info around the highly anticipated Trailer 2, highly probable predictions, and the projected timelines associated with this game. Post the unveiling of Trailer 1 on December 5th, 2023, providing enthusiasts with a tantalizing glimpse into the world of the forthcoming GTA installment. Rockstar has maintained a notable silence. Despite the absence of official announcements, the internet has been abuzz with articles and claims, including a recent piece highlighting details allegedly leaked by a Twitter user. It's prudent to approach such assertions with a discerning eye, given the prevalence of misinformation in the digital space, especially with the emergence of numerous GTA 6-themed accounts. Interestingly, amidst the sea of speculations, it's essential to acknowledge the presence of individuals who accurately leaked details about the first trailer on Reddit before its official release. One mysterious figure stands out, predicting not only the featured song, but also pinpointing the release date, directing curious minds to their username as a form of verification. This individual, while refraining from sharing disruptive insights into the game's development, did provide a tantalizing glimpse into new features. Among the disclosed features are the intriguing prospect of dual-wielding weapons, confirmed instances of gore and dismemberment, and the promise of varied sunset colors. A unique addition to the GTA universe includes a Miami-themed 3v3 basketball element, with a connection drawn to a hypothetical collaboration between Rockstar and LeBron James. The figure behind these leaks, having created their account on November 19th, 2023, mysteriously vanished shortly after sharing these details, leaving behind a trail of speculative wonder. As we navigate through these uncharted waters of gaming anticipation, the veil of mystery surrounding GTA 6 continues to captivate and enthrall gaming enthusiasts worldwide. Diving deeper into the intricacies surrounding the leaked gameplay footage, it's important to clarify that what we witnessed is not a true representation of the final product. The showcased gameplay is derived from an older build, and the developers have assured the gaming community that the game will undergo significant visual enhancements. This preliminary look is merely a glimpse, offering little resemblance to the expansive and refined map that will unfold when the game is officially released. In evaluating the validity of information, it's pertinent to underscore that Jamie King's perspectives on GTA 6 hold little value, and the credibility of the Reddit leak stands stronger. As is customary in the gaming landscape, a level of skepticism is warranted particularly given the prevalence of misinformation circulating through various GTA 6-related accounts. Now, turning our focus to the anticipation surrounding the release of the second trailer for GTA 6, historical trends provide valuable insights. Examining the timelines of previous releases, such as GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, reveals a consistent pattern. 
The second trailer typically arrives approximately a year after the debut of the first one. This established rhythm aligns with expectations for GTA 6. Considering the guidance from Rockstar and its parent company, Take-Two Interactive, which envisions the game's release in fiscal year 2025, ending on March 31st, the stage is set for an eagerly awaited gaming experience. The projected revenue of $8 billion underscores the ambitious plans to deliver groundbreaking titles, with GTA 6 at the forefront. The confirmation of the 2025 release through the first official trailer adds another layer of certainty to the equation. With the prospective release of GTA 6 in the first quarter of 2025, the logical assumption is that the second trailer will make its debut sometime in 2024. Speculations within the gaming community have surfaced, with one user dissecting the first trailer and estimating an August or October release for Trailer 2, followed by a potential final trailer in January. The sentiment resonates with the idea of maintaining momentum and sustaining excitement among fans. An intriguing twist enters the narrative with the potential release of the PS5 Pro in November, suggesting a strategic move to reduce the waiting time for additional information. As the community engages in this dynamic dance of anticipation, excitement mounts for the next trailer, where glimpses of actual gameplay are eagerly awaited. Venturing deeper into the realm of anticipation surrounding GTA 6, comparisons with Red Dead Redemption 2, which boasted six trailers, underscore the immense budget and expansive scope that the upcoming installment is set to showcase. Expectations are set for a dynamic marketing approach with two trailers, each dedicated to unraveling the story of a protagonist. This anticipation is further fueled by the likelihood of a dedicated gameplay trailer, shedding light on the mechanics and features, as well as a comprehensive trailer providing insights into the vastness of the game's map. Additionally, there's a tantalizing prospect of a trailer focusing on the diverse groups and gangs that inhabit distinct zones within the game. This comprehensive promotional strategy is indicative of a monumental project that promises to redefine the gaming landscape. Now, let's unravel the rationale behind the assertion that GTA 6 is poised for a late 2025 release. Examining the historical trajectory of game releases, particularly the two-year gap between the initial trailer and the game hitting the shelves, aligns seamlessly with fiscal reports. This alignment serves as a solid foundation for confidence in predicting the game's availability by the end of 2025. Pondering the intriguing possibility that GTA 6's launch timeline might mirror that of its predecessor, GTA 5, sparks curiosity. Noting the first teaser trailer's debut on November 2nd, 2011, and comparing it with GTA 5's unveiling on December 5th, 2023, there's a parallelism that invites speculation. Expanding this analogy to include the release of the first two screenshots for GTA 5 on July 12th, 2012, suggests a timeline for potential content drops for GTA 6. If we entertain the notion of a one-year gap between the first and second trailers, mirroring historical patterns, and factor in Rockstar's potential aim for a fall release, an intricate timeline unfolds. Of course, acknowledging the industry's unpredictability, potential delays could sway this projection. Encouraging the community to share their insights, the script opens a channel for predictions regarding the release of GTA 6 Trailer 2. For those intrigued by a personal timeline, a meticulous projection is presented. The anticipation of Trailer 2 making its debut around April or May 2024, strategically ahead of the summer, is poised to keep the gaming community buzzing. Subsequent to this, the prediction of a third trailer, potentially a gameplay trailer, surfacing around October or November of the same year, with the possibility of extending into December, adds to the excitement. Early 2025 is earmarked for another critical trailer, presumably a launch trailer, complemented by TV spots to amplify the buzz. During the interim periods, additional content drops are anticipated, featuring new screenshots, short-form videos, and artworks, ensuring a sustained engagement with the gaming audience. Acknowledging the evolving landscape of marketing, the script posits that character trailers, a hallmark of GTA 5's promotional strategy, may not be a focal point this time. The shift from three protagonists in GTA 5 to two in the current installment lends credence to this assertion. The first trailer introduced Lucia, and the prediction is that the second trailer will shift the spotlight to Jason, offering glimpses into his character and potentially unveiling more facets of the game's map, including Sport Gilhorn. Furthermore, a dedicated story trailer is envisioned, delving deeper into the narrative, characters, and plot. 
If Rockstar aims to sustain the momentum generated by the first trailer and is eyeing an early 2025 release, the likelihood of witnessing the second trailer before the summer of the current year becomes plausible. We'll delve into the latest iteration of the GTA 6 mapping endeavor. The developers have expanded and refined the GTA 6 map significantly, making it the most comprehensive fan-made project to date. It incorporates all available data from leaks and the initial official trailer. We'll explore the recent updates to the map and conduct a fascinating comparison between the current GTA 6 map and those of previous GTA games. Additionally, we'll examine a fan-created satellite view of the GTA 6 map, along with the inclusion of Tommy Versetti's mansion spotted in the trailer. All of these elements will be discussed in detail throughout this video. Let's kick things off with the GTA 6 mapping project. Changes have been implemented across all regions of the map. To ensure we cover everything comprehensively, we'll begin our tour from the northwest and work our way down, addressing each modification along the journey. Firstly, the map's dimensions have been expanded from 16,000 by 16,000 to 18,000 by 18,000 to accommodate the newly added land mass. Each square on the map measures 500 x 500 meters. Based on the latest estimations, the map will be larger than before, requiring more space to accommodate all its features. Currently, the northern portion of the map remains unknown, which contributes to its perceived size. Hence, the map extends beyond what's visible on the screen. According to rumors, the GTA 6 map is speculated to encompass three major cities. Presently, we're aware of two. Vice City, the largest city, and Port Gorn, which has undergone further expansion in the latest map update. The third location, Yorktown, is anticipated to be modeled after Tampa. Rumors suggest that it could be the third major city featured on the map. However, at present, there's limited information available about it in the leaks. The only indication we have is a sign displaying New York Tune within Port Gorn. Regarding Port Gorn, details are scarce apart from its name and general location. It's positioned north of Fort Killorn and east of Yorktown. Moving on, we encounter Hank Hill, one of the notable elevations in the game. Despite Florida's predominantly flat terrain, Rockstar has incorporated hills sporadically to diversify the landscape. Adjacent to Hank Hill are the Domed Hills, another series of elevated areas. Notably, the border of a river is highlighted in orange, indicating speculative terrain. Nonetheless, it appears to be situated in the vicinity of Red Hill, a small town positioned near Lake Leonida. The largest body of water, Lake Leonida, sits approximately at the map's midpoint, drawing parallels to Lake Okeechobee in real life. To the north of Lake Leonida lies Fairyland Forest, a wooded area neighboring Fairyland, a playful nod to Disney World. To the east of Lake Leonida, you'll find Ambrosia and Laurel, two additional small towns along with North Beaches. Heading south from Yorktown, we reach Port Gorn, which has undergone expansion westward. The buildings and roads depicted in black and gray correspond to those visible in leaked footage and the trailer. Roads highlighted in red, along with orange borders, remain speculative. However, the port area shows two speculative buildings and a portion of the border that's confirmed. The Bay Area has seen overall enlargement, including modifications to the speculative islands near Port Gorn. Additionally, a newly added section featuring small islands and a confirmed border indicates further expansion. With these developments, Port Gorn's size may rival that of Vice City. It might not match Vice City's scale, but it could rival, if not surpass, GTA 5's Los Santos, which is remarkable, considering it's our second city on the map. Additionally, the confirmed borders of Port Goro have been adjusted based on new evidence. The remaining areas in Port Goro largely remain unchanged. We still have Han Waffles Diner, surrounded by its buildings and structures, along with Port Gorn Motel, Gorn Bluff, the Pawn Shop, Port Gorn Raceway, Port Gorn Airfield, and the United State Prison. Belleville and Iconfina remain situated near Vice City. Now, focusing on Vice City itself, much of it retains its layout from the previous map update. We observed the increasing density of the map, particularly with the stockyard and crossdown area now filled in, along with the hotels in the Vice Beach area. The proximity of the buildings to one another is quite striking. Additionally, the buildings on Pelican Harbor Island remain consistent with the previous update. However, there's been a recent discovery. I'd appreciate your thoughts on this matter in the comments below, as it could potentially be significant if confirmed. According to this viewer, they claim to have identified Tommy Versetti's mansion in the trailer. They're referring to this specific mansion situated on the middle island, directly behind the enormous yacht. It bears a striking resemblance to his iconic abode, raising the possibility that it could indeed be the one. However, it's challenging to make a definitive judgment, since it's nighttime in the footage. It could simply resemble it, but it's difficult to confirm. Nevertheless, it would be fantastic if it indeed makes a return in the game. 
The recent update brought significant changes to Vice City, particularly with the Vice City port. This is where the scene featuring the bolt shot from the trailer takes place. Now, we have a clearer understanding of its entire border, with some buildings identified. There are two speculative buildings, along with some confirmed ones. The bridges have been updated, and there have been adjustments to the speculated Ryaway. Furthermore, the FLP Solar Amphitheater has been relocated northward based on new evidence. The Vice City International Airport Metro Station has also undergone updates, aligning with new information from leaks. Notably, the airport now appears more complete, with an additional hangar. These encompass all the changes made to Vice City. Now let's shift our focus to the Grass Rivers, as they've also received updates. The speculative landmass along the west coast has been adjusted to accommodate the map expansion. Notably, the Lake SLW waterway now connects to the Grass Rivers, providing insight into the potential appearance of this swampy region on the map. A scene from the trailer showcased the airbolt, a vehicle likely used for traversing these areas. Hamlet remains in its original position, serving as a parody of Homestead. It's interesting to note the location of the Shaka Shed, situated in the middle of the Grass Rivers, reminiscent of the shacks seen in Lemoyne in Red Dead Redemption 2. This suggests that this area may draw inspiration from its counterpart. Furthermore, I anticipate hunting to be quite intense in this region, given the presence of alligators, snakes, and lizards. The diverse wildlife, particularly at night, is bound to create a thrilling atmosphere. Additionally, changes have been made to the Gator Keys and the surrounding islands, as observed in the trailer. More specifically, there have been additions to speculative locations, such as Bird Key, based on new evidence. Additionally, some speculative areas across the map have been updated. That wraps up the analysis of the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. It'll be intriguing to see how closely it aligns with the actual map. Moreover, let's delve into a fascinating comparison between this latest version and all the other maps in the GTA series. Take a look at this comparison. On the left side, you'll find the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. Above it, there's the map of North Yankton from GTA 5. To the right of the North Yankton map, you'll see the island of Copico from GTA Online. Next to Copico, there's the GTA 5 map. Below that, we have the GTA 4 map. Below the GTA 4 map are the maps of Liberty City and GTA 3. And finally, at the bottom, there's the map of GTA San Andreas. One of the first things I noticed is how compact the GTA 4 map appears compared to others. Despite its small size, it boasted greater density than the GTA V map. Streets were closely packed, and every inch of space was utilized efficiently. Anyone who's played GTA 4 can attest to the unparalleled density of its city, brimming with intricate details. I anticipate a similar level of density and attention to detail in the GTA 6 map. Considering the vastness of the GTA 4 map, despite its modest size, I expect the density in GTA 6 to match, if not surpass, that level. Even though GTA 6 is already approximately twice the size of the GTA 5 map, the addition of intricate details will make it feel even more expansive. Now, let's examine a comparison between the old GTA Vice City map and the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. The old Vice City map has been superimposed onto the new one, allowing for a visual comparison of the two. What caught my attention was the size of the GTA Vice City map, which is quite substantial. However, in GTA 6, improvements are expected across the board. There will be more buildings, positioned closer together, enhancing the overall design and creating a denser environment. I also wanted to discuss a map that's been generating a lot of buzz within the community. Someone utilized images from Google Maps to supplement the mapping project. This method offers a clearer perspective on how the game's environment might appear in terms of scale and layout. While this representation may exaggerate the city's size with an abundance of buildings, it provides insights into the length and layout of highways, which have been overlaid with speculative areas. We're delving into the realm of GTA 6 Online, the upcoming multiplayer aspect of Rockstar Games' Grand Theft Auto 6. We'll dissect all the insights gathered from leaks back in 2022, alongside an intriguing anti-cheat patent filed by Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two Interactive. This patent offers a glimpse into how the forthcoming online experience aims to ensure a safer environment compared to the current GTA Online. Furthermore, we'll explore a novel method Rockstar plans to implement in GTA 6 for managing online sessions. This innovation promises to infuse the expansive world of GTA 6 with a livelier atmosphere, enriching the player's immersion in its intricacies. Undoubtedly, GTA Online stands as a titan in the realm of multiplayer gaming. Its enduring popularity 
has significantly contributed to the ongoing success of GTA 5 over the past 11 years. This success owes much to Rockstar's astute strategy. Crafting a robust core game with GTA 5, and then supplementing it with regular content updates for the online segment. By continually introducing new weapons, vehicles, and attire, Rockstar keeps players engaged and motivated to accumulate in-game currency. As we eagerly anticipate the official unveiling of GTA 6, players are hopeful that it will address prevalent issues plaguing the current iteration. Chief among these concerns is the rampant presence of modders and cheaters, whose actions not only disrupt gameplay, but also pose security risks by unlawfully accessing personal data. To tackle this issue, Rockstar has devised a fresh approach set to debut in GTA 6. This method aims to bolster the game's security measures. The patent responsible for this enhancement is titled Method and Apparatus for Preventing Cheating in a Video Game Environment by Providing Obfuscated Game Variables. Filed by Take-Two Interactive, Rockstar's parent company, in 2019, this patent outlines a system and method aimed at curbing cheating within video game environments. By disguising game variables in memory, the patent seeks to thwart attempts by players to monitor and manipulate values such as health, ammunition, and in-game currency for unfair advantages. Traditionally, developers combat such exploits by encrypting, coding, or obfuscating the location of these values, alongside implementing integrity checks to detect unauthorized modifications. However, these methods have drawbacks, as they often impact game performance and inadvertently expose variable locations to savvy attackers. Rockstar's innovation lies in masking the whereabouts of these variables, offering a more robust defense against cheating in GTA 6's online. I won't delve into the technical intricacies, but essentially, Rockstar employs a clever and seemingly straightforward technique to conceal these values. This makes it considerably tougher for attackers to pinpoint their locations. While the concept of masking values may seem straightforward, its effectiveness in bolstering stability and enhancing security for the future online segment is paramount. Moving forward, let's turn our attention to the next patent, titled System and Method for Session Management in a Multiplayer Network Gaming Environment. Filed by T2 Interactive in 2021, this patent addresses Disclosed Our Systems and Methods for Session Management. The Disclosed System allows for seamless merging and splitting of network sessions in a multiplayer network gaming environment. Seamless session management allows dynamic movement of players in a virtual world during gameplay without unnecessary loading and or stalling. As the players in the virtual world move around, the management of active game sessions can be improved to affect a more realistic perceived population. In this patent, Rockstar highlights the crucial role of online components in the success of many games, citing GTA Online as an example. They emphasize the challenges of managing network technology and resources to create a vibrant virtual world. Traditional MMO games often face limitations in session management, with some opting for single sessions that may restrict the depth of content due to increasing player counts. Others utilize multiple sessions, which can hinder feasibility, especially in peer-to-peer -peer exchanges like in GTA Online. To address these issues, Rockstar has developed a pioneering system for seamless session management. This innovative approach enables fluid splitting and merging of network sessions, allowing for a more immersive virtual world free from hardware and software constraints. Allowing players from different sessions, but in the same virtual area of the map, for example, to be merged into a single session. This allows players from previously different sessions to come across one another, thereby making the virtual world seem more populated. As an additional advantage, seamless session merging handles many network failures silently. In prior art systems, a player who loses network connectivity can be kicked out of a session and may not be able to rejoin because they are in a session by themselves. However, the Session Management System 100 allows for a disconnected player to exist in a session by themselves for a predetermined period before they are reconnected to the remaining players in the session or can be joined with another session. The method begins with monitoring a triggering event. In some embodiments, the triggering event defines when to merge two sessions or split a single session. For example, when the object, virtual players, are in the same session, move physically apart from another, the object by a predetermined virtual distance, this triggers the session management system to split the session into two different sessions. Likewise, 
If objects from two different sessions are within a predetermined virtual distance from one another, the session management system and merge the sessions to allow interaction between objects of the respective sessions. Other instances of monitored triggering events encompass various player and object actions, including changes in position or visibility, player entries and exits from the virtual world, and game-related activities like mission completions or tutorial beginnings. Rockstar's solution ensures seamless management of these events, preventing inconsistencies such as duplicated objects during session transitions. This approach accounts for factors like virtual geography, team management, networking resources, and social relationships to maintain continuity across sessions. For example, once a session is split, there can be two sessions, each with their own distinct copy of an object. Avoiding this split can avoid players that intentionally duplicate valuable objects to exploit virtual game economics. If these two sessions were to later merge, there can then be two identical objects in the same session. In this manner, the session management system advantageously avoids object duplication when two players are merged following a split. I trust that I've conveyed this information clearly. The implementation of this new system in GTA 6 promises to enhance the game's atmosphere, ensuring a more bustling world while maintaining a high level of detail throughout. Now, let's delve into what we've learned about GTA Online from the leaks of 2022. Multiplayer. In the bottom left in one of the clips, one can see there are two players in a 30-player lobby. This is because there are two slots for spectators, similar to GTA Online and Red Dead Online. There is also a reference to the script host. After that, there is a code which is either the session host or game master. Based on the information gathered, it seems probable that peer-to-peer -peer connections and 30-player lobbies will make a comeback in GTA 6 Online. However, there's a twist in how sessions will operate, allowing for seamless transitions between them. We're about to explore the intricacies of the Vice City mapping project, unraveling the mysteries of the latest map iteration. Join us as we meticulously analyze the details and draw insightful comparisons between the expansive GTA 6 map and its predecessors within the series. Our adventure doesn't stop there. We'll be immersing ourselves in the leaked information from 2022, unveiling a treasure trove of open world activities. Brace yourselves for a comprehensive list featuring every nook and cranny on the GTA 6 map, showcasing not only new additions but also the anticipated return of beloved locations from the iconic GTA Vice City, as hinted in the leaks. Let's kick off this exploration by delving into the heart of the GTA 6 mapping project. For those familiar with it, this official endeavor aims to provide a scale-accurate representation of what players can expect in the actual game. The map sprawls across two major cities, Vice City and Ford Gorn, and every detail is meticulous curated from leaks and the official trailer. Now, for those wondering about the seemingly expansive green spaces on the map, it's important to acknowledge the limitations of our knowledge. The apparent emptiness serves as a stark reminder of the scarcity of information currently available. The top portion of the map, appearing cut off, isn't indicative of boundaries or future expansions, but is rather a canvas awaiting details yet to be unveiled. Addressing rumors about the map's size, speculation abounds that GTA 6 will boast three major cities. While Vice City and Port Gorn are confirmed, the third city remains shrouded in mystery. There's a buzz that it might be Yorktown, potentially located north of Port Gorn. However, specifics about the placement of these locations marked in red are still elusive. Now, let's delve into the exciting prospect of exploring key locations on the GTA 6 map. These names, extracted from the official trailer and leaks, offer a tantalizing glimpse into the rich and diverse world awaiting players. Get ready to traverse the landscapes of Yorktown Red Hill Fairyland Forest, near Berryland, a whimsical Disneyland parody, Ambrosia Lake, Leonida, Lore North, Beaches Belleville, Ica, Vice City, Hamlet, Grass Rivers, and the enigmatic Gator Keys. As our journey unfolds, stay tuned for more updates, insights, and speculations surrounding the continually expanding universe of GTA 6. The road ahead promises thrilling surprises, and we're here to navigate it together. Now, let's delve deeper into the intriguing details surrounding Port Gellhorn. The bustling streets and structures around Hank's Waffles Diner, a focal point for a heist according to the leaks, spark anticipation for dynamic in-game events. The meticulous rendering of these locales not only captures the essence of the city, but also invites players to immerse themselves in the narrative-driven experiences that Rockstar Games is known for. Examining the speculative changes in Port Gellhorn, the notable relocation of the Port Gellhorn airfield, 
suggests a strategic reimagining of the city's layout. This shift, coupled with the adjustment of the Port Gellhorn Raceway, hints at a carefully planned urban evolution, potentially altering the dynamics of the airport's placement within the city. The industrial sector of Port Gellhorn provides a gritty backdrop, with the iconic United States prison maintaining its imposing presence. The inclusion of the pawn shop, prominently featured in the trailer, underscores the developer's commitment to integrating real-world elements seamlessly into the game environment. Venturing southward, areas like Second Fina and Belleville remain enigmatic, their constant relocation adding an element of unpredictability to their final positioning on the map. Ambrosia La Pearl, steeped in mystery, teases players with its undisclosed location, heightening the sense of intrigue surrounding these diverse neighborhoods. Our exploration now takes us into the heart of Vice City, where a substantial chunk of the urban landscape unfolds before us. While speculation abounds regarding the placement of red buildings and names, the gray structures, sourced from both the trailer and leaks, serve as tangible landmarks, anchoring our understanding of the evolving cityscape. Vice Beach emerges as a vibrant district, adorned with numerous hotels that were meticulously analyzed in previous videos, providing a tangible link between the virtual world and its real-life counterparts. Washington Beach, with its diverse skyline, beckons players with promises of new adventures, enhanced by the improved streets of Stockyard, Little Haiti, Rock Ridge, and Crosstown, as showcased in the trailer footage. Descending further into the enchanting realm of Grass Rivers, we come across the enigmatic district of Hamlet, speculated to mirror the charm of Homestead, yet the persistent red designation leaves us tantalizingly in the dark about its precise location. This region reveals fascinating land Marks, including a power plant nestled at Turkey Point and a sewage treatment plant, painting a vivid picture of the industrial landscape as gleaned from leaked footage. The presence of Grass Rivers itself, along with the mysterious Gator Keys and the alluring sundown, adds an extra layer of intrigue to this particular segment of the expansive GTA 6 map. A moment of appreciation is certainly due to the dedicated individuals steering the mapping project, whose commendable efforts grant fans an evolving and detailed peek into the GTA 6 world. Their commitment to accuracy and meticulous attention to detail foreshadow an immersive gaming experience, setting the stage for the excitement surrounding the official release. Now, let's delve into a truly mind-blowing comparison that has set the gaming community abuzz. Our gaze shifts to the juxtaposition of Los Santos from GTA 5, Liberty City from the iconic GTA 4, and the highly anticipated Vice Beach from GTA 6. The comparison not only highlights the need for potential adjustments in Vice Beach's size, but also emphasizes the extraordinary density and detail that players can expect. Acknowledging the observed need for a slight enlargement of Vice Beach, the visual impact remains nothing short of extraordinary. The comparison underscores the incredible density that GTA 6 promises, reminiscent of the lively streets and vibrant atmosphere experienced in the streets of GTA 4's Liberty City. Speculation regarding the buildings in Vice Beach, as showcased in the mapping project, heightens the anticipation, with the close proximity of structures promising an unparalleled level of immersion and detail, evoking nostalgia from the beloved GTA 4 era. This meticulously crafted map stands as a colossal playground, harking back to the bustling streets that made GTA 4 a standout title. The intricate detailing, the tightly packed urban landscape, and the anticipated density all point towards an experience that pays homage to the franchise's esteemed roots while pushing boundaries in the expansive open-world genre. The enormity of GTA 6, both in size and detail, heralds a new era in gaming. The astonishing comparison, showcasing the potential density and intricacy of Vice City, is nothing short of a revelation. A special acknowledgement goes out to the mapping community for their outstanding work in envisioning an entire Vice City characterized by a multitude of buildings. The level of density and detail promised is unprecedented and is set to redefine the benchmarks of open-world gaming. The concept of an expansive map allegedly featuring three cities elevates the excitement, presenting players with a gaming landscape of unparalleled proportions. Now, delving into the realm of open-world activities revealed in the 2022 leaks, the thrill intensifies. With four confirmed activities and the potential inclusion of dice, GTA 6 promises a diverse range of immersive experiences. Golf, fishing, and races are confirmed elements that contribute to the dynamic and engaging environment that Rockstar Games is crafting. A particularly intriguing moment unfolds in the trailer, as Jason, visibly nervous, speeds away from a robbery scene, with Luke clutching the ill-gotten cash. In the distance, the iconic Top Golf in Doro makes a cameo, a real-world entertainment destination located in Doro, Florida. The climate-controlled hitting bays, HDTVs, and sports bar elements create an enticing backdrop for players to explore. This real-world integration adds a layer of authenticity, bridging the gap between the virtual and real worlds. 
Fishing, poised to be a serene yet potentially rewarding pastime, is expected to be available from various locations in the vast ocean. Races, an integral and adrenaline pumping element of the GTA series, are set to deliver high octane excitement that fans have come to expect from the franchise. Furthermore, a detailed list from the GTA 6 document unravels every location visible in the leaks on the GTA 6 map. This includes not only new and thrilling destinations, but also the return of iconic locations from the beloved GTA Vice City. The inclusion of familiar locales adds a nostalgic touch, creating a seamless connection between the past and the present within the expansive world of GTA 6. Now let's embark on a comprehensive exploration of some of the familiar locales, making a triumphant return in GTA 6 as unveiled by the mapping project. These recognizable names from the GTA Vice City era evoke a sense of nostalgia, rekindling memories of past gaming experiences. Leaflinks, Malibu Club, Washington Beach, Ocean Beach, Ocean Drive, Ocean View, and Little Haiti are just a few examples of the beloved spots that players will once again encounter in the immersive world of GTA 6. It's a poignant journey back in time as we rediscover these iconic locations, now reimagined and seamlessly integrated into the highly anticipated GTA 6 map. Venturing further into the extensive list of locations, our focus remains on the map, unveiling an array of intriguing places that contribute to the game's richness. Among these, the Jack of Seas nightclub takes center stage, having made appearances in both the official trailer and the leaks from 2022. While a detailed reading of every location is beyond the scope, feel free to pause the video and explore these fascinating spots at your own pace. From quaint small stores to the distinctive stone sculpture gracing Vice Beach, each location adds layers of detail and authenticity to the sprawling game world some of which have been exclusively revealed through leaks. Shifting our gaze to Port Gilhorn, a diverse array of captivating places awaits discovery. The car wash, soccer field, a bustling basketball court, the Ambrosia Farm, and the intriguing King Neptune statue are just a glimpse into the eclectic offerings in this part of the map. Sailing through the Keys, exploring underwater ruins, investigating an underwater research facility, and contemplating the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle add an extra layer of fascination to the GTA 6 experience. With the unveiling of the mapping project, Project, the sheer depth and meticulous attention to detail that Rockstar is investing in the GTA 6 map become even more awe-inspiring. We're discussing how much money Rockstar Games has made from the first trailer released back in December. We'll also cover Rockstar's plans for the next trailer and their potential strategies for cross-promoting GTA 6. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get into Rockstar's promotion tactics for GTA 6 and when we might see a second trailer. First off, the timing of the next GTA 6 trailer is closely tied to GTA Online's upcoming update. Whether it's just a coincidence or a smart marketing move, this is a strategy Rockstar has used before. For example, they released GTA Online's Winter December DLC a week after the first GTA 6 trailer. This timing helped make it the most viewed GTA Online trailer ever, even beating out the reveal trailer for Red Dead Redemption 2. If Rockstar decides to use the same approach, we might get some new Grand Theft Auto 6 details next week. This could be a second trailer, some screenshots, or additional information about the game. The timing would line up perfectly with the next big GTA Online update, set to drop on Tuesday, June 25th. This is confirmed because the GTA Plus event period ends the day before. By releasing new GTA 6 content a week before the update, Rockstar could generate more interest in the upcoming DLC. If, for some reason, we don't get a new trailer or details from Rockstar, I think they might drop more hints in this summer's GTA Online update, just like they did last summer. You might remember a specific t-shirt from that update, which actually hinted at the exact trailer date and time. It had symbols from the Zancudo basement with a cryptic message that translated to, one day will reveal all. It does make you wonder if Rockstar will include some teases or cross-promotion in this update. Now that GTA 6 is officially announced, they might do something similar to a few years ago with GTA Online and Red Dead Redemption 2, where treasure hunts let you unlock weapons in GTA Online and receive them in Red Dead Redemption 2 when it launched. Speaking of GTA 6 trailers, here's an interesting fact. Rockstar Games has made a ton of money from the trailer on YouTube. We've talked about this in the last couple of videos, how it leaked because someone accessed a YouTube admin panel, but you can actually use public data and analytics to see how much money Rockstar has made from that trailer. It has almost 195 million views, closing in on 200 million, which is absolutely insane. Rockstar Games has made nearly $1 million from that trailer alone. The craziest part is that even though the trailer doesn't have ads, Rockstar Games still earns money from YouTube Premium users. While this isn't a huge portion of the population, it generates revenue based on watch time. From that alone, they've nearly made a million dollars. Imagine if they had actual ads on the video, they'd be making even more. 
but a million dollars just from premium users watching it is still pretty wild. In the grand scheme, it's a small amount for Rockstar and just a drop in the bucket compared to how much they'll make when GTA 6 actually releases. Still, it's an impressive stat for a trailer that Strauss Zelnick says has repeatedly broken the internet. All this excitement around GTA 6 is also boosting their parent company, Take-Two Interactive, with a substantial jump in stock price. According to Investing.com, an article published a few days ago states, the hotly anticipated release of the latest installment of Take-Two Interactive's mega-popular Grand Theft Auto franchise should fuel a substantial uptick in bookings and profitability at the video game maker, according to a JP Morgan analyst's note to clients. The analyst added that the gaming sector is increasingly focused on maximizing the success of proven titles, saying, consumer engagement and publisher resources have consolidated around the largest gaming franchises. They believe this trend favors the biggest players in the industry, with the biggest hits likely to get bigger and mid-tier games likely to struggle as competition costs increase. For this reason, investor expectations for GTA 6 are high, given the success of prior releases like GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2. Analysts anticipate that GTA 6 will drive a significant increase in bookings and profitability for Take-Two and potentially boost its valuation. They reiterated their overweight rating for Take-Two and raised their December 2024 price target from $180 to $200. All this is great news for the gaming industry. Confidence in Grand Theft. Auto 6 and Take-Two Interactive is growing, both among industry insiders and on Wall Street. It's just positive news all around. On another note, I initially thought GTA 6 would dominate the scene in 2025, causing other developers and publishers to steer clear. But that's not the case. Recently, at the Xbox Games Showcase, several amazing titles were announced. Some set for 2024 like Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and Assassin's Creed Shadows. Interestingly, many other titles are now slated for 2025, meaning they'll be directly competing with GTA 6. Let's go over some of those anticipated titles. We've got some major hits like Doom, The Dark Ages, Death Stranding 2, Monster Hunter Wilds, Little Nightmares 3, Fable, Judas, The New Switch 2, and its launch games, Expedition 33, Ghost of Tsushima 2, Civilization 7, Adam Falls, Spider-Man, Venom, and many more. And we haven't even seen Nintendo's lineup yet, which we'll find out at Nintendo Direct. There could also be surprise contenders like another Naughty Dog game. 2025 is shaping up to be an incredible year for gaming, possibly the best ever. And of course, GTA 6 will be a major highlight if Rockstar sticks to the full 2025 release date. I'm confident they will, especially after that internal delay. This way, they avoid a public delay, which would have happened if they initially aimed for early 2025 and then had to push it back. One thing I'd love to hear from Rockstar next is when we can pre-order the game and get a more specific release date. I'm really looking forward to when the marketing period kicks off. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything we discussed today. Do you think we'll get new GTA 6 trailers, info, or details from Rockstar soon? We'll delve into the most recent iteration of the GTA 6 mapping endeavor. We'll explore the freshest alterations introduced to the map, including newly incorporated locales and adjusted road placements. Additionally, we'll examine some intriguing revelations stemming from the inaugural official trailer, such as the appearance of a swordfish. Furthermore, we aim to tackle one of the pivotal queries surrounding GTA 6, the extent of Rockstar's intention to amalgamate multiple states into the fictional entity of Leonida. We'll sift through all available clues, encompassing leaks and insights from the initial trailer, to shed light on the potential inclusion of Georgia in the game. Let's kick off by scrutinizing the latest rendition of the GTA 6 mapping endeavor. This most recent update, which debuted just a few hours ago, represents the pinnacle of this extensive fan-driven mapping project. Here's a peek at the current state of the GTA 6 map. We've got Vice City and Port Gilhorn in the mix, with tweaks made to both cities, along with some other spots on the map. Keep an eye out for changes like the prison from the opening shot and the gator keys. To kick things off, there's a fresh addition to Vice City known as Waning Sands. While details about this neighborhood are mostly speculative at this point, it's believed to be the setting for a pivotal scene from the trailer. You know, the one where Jason and Lucia dodge past a few police officers in their getaway vehicle. In this vicinity, you'll find the Evergreen Mall Center, prominently featured at the start of the scene. Keep an eye out for a sign on the right side of the frame, showcasing various stores set to be part of this plaza. In a recent mapping video, there was some speculation about whether this plaza would be fully accessible. While only part of the name MLE is visible at the top of the sign, 
it seems the mapping community is also leaning towards it being called Evergreen MLE. However, the exact location of the MLE within the plaza is still up for speculation. Notice how the buildings on the map are marked in red? Well, there are a few other speculative additions to Waning Sands. These include a gas station, Sailbolt K condos, and cricket club condos. Here's what we're using as a reference. You can catch a glimpse of the gas station roof along with other nearby buildings. In a previous video, we floated the idea that this could be Top Golf in Dalal, Florida. However, it seems unlikely now since the placement doesn't quite line up. But hey, let's hold off judgment until we know more. Now, let's talk about some updates in the positioning of various elements. The placement of several buildings, basements, speculative roads, metro, rail, crosstown, downtown, and Brickle has been tweaked. We're using yellow and purple lines to show the speculative metro and railway in Vice City. The metro system has seen some significant enhancements, especially in its connectivity to Vice City International Airport and the area between Crosstown and Brickell. The buildings in this vicinity have also been reorganized to more closely resemble their real-life counterparts. Speculative roads and highways have been adjusted to better fit the new placements. We've also made slight adjustments to the rotation of the prison, from the opening scene with Luke to align with new evidence. Additionally, we've fine-tuned the positions of some trailer markers in the stockyard area such as those for the car meet in Windwood and the bikers in Little Haiti. In terms of location changes, LeafLinks from the previous map version has been moved to Virginia Key, meaning earlier speculations regarding LeafLinks are no longer applicable. Furthermore, based on new radar map evidence, the shape of Picnic Island has been altered. Heading down south, you'll notice that Hamlet is no longer labeled as such. Instead, it's reverted to its real-life name, Homestead. This change suggests that Hamlet might be situated elsewhere in the game. Now, shifting our focus to Port Gellhorn, the other major city on the map, it's also undergone some updates. We've added more speculative details for the area across the body of water on the other side of Buer Bridge, incorporating new evidence into the mix. So, to sum up, those are the latest updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Before we wrap up, let's delve into an interesting discovery from the first official trailer. I'm not into fishing, but I noticed this in the trailer, and my first thought was a swordfish, but I could be wrong. Is anyone who knows more about fishing able to confirm? Let me know what you all think this is. Well, that's quite an intriguing find. Personally, it seems like a house decoration to me, but I'm eager to hear your thoughts in the comments below. In the next part of this video, we'll tackle the question about Georgia. On display in the leaks and backed up by inside journalists, the game will feature a plethora of locations that focus on Miami and the surrounding areas. The two main locations of the game are Vice City, based on Miami, and Port Gellhorn, which lifts direct locations from Panama City. As well as this, it seems Rockstar have brought down and featured locations from Georgia, including a prison and mountain ranges not present in real-world Florida. I'm curious, do you think Georgia will make an appearance in GTA 6? Let's examine the evidence we have so far. There have been some recent findings, so let's kick off by checking out this Reddit post. Georgia evidence. In the leaks, there's a mention of canyon etchings, along with the other ambient events, which I thought couldn't be in or based in Florida. The nearest canyon to Florida, is Providence Canyon State Park in Georgia and is only 2.5 hours away from Florida. This also may explain Red Hill Forest and the testing of Scree Hills in the leaks. There's also a couple mountains or large hills seen in the trailer. The first looks more like a large hill in North Florida, probably for hill climbing, but the second one at the end of the trailer looks like a Georgia mountain like the one seen in the leaks. First off, this individual is discussing a clip from the leaks where a developer is seen firing an assault rifle at a vehicle while Lucia is in the background. They've noted several ramps in the clip, suggesting developers use them to test vehicles on different slopes. The clip also shows various types of ramps listed, including MTB ramps, hill climb, mud drag, scree hill, mud drag string, and crash tests, as well as MX tracks. The speculation is that Rockstar might have been testing the scree hill due to its resemblance to locations in Georgia, Additionally, two shots from the trailer show hills, one at the 59 second mark where someone jumps on a table, causing it to break, revealing multiple cars ascending a steep hill in the background, and another in the final shot where Lucia kicks down the door to a convenience store, showing another hill or mountain through the window. Let's delve into the comments and see what the community thinks about these hills. Are there similar hills in Florida? Or has Rockstar taken some creative liberties and introduced hills from Georgia. Ekanfinaka is a place in the game, shown by the leaks. And Ekanfinaka is literally the old name for a swamp in southern Georgia. Not to mention we saw a big hill small mountain. I've lived in Florida for a long time. There are no hills anything like that in the state. Northern Florida has some hills, but nothing like that at all. 
the hill in the leaks resembles the Blue Ridge in northern Georgia. It's a fictional state. It could be a collection of features from four or five states for all we know. Two hours outside of Florida is hardly breaking the concept. I'd imagine much of the urban landscape will be much like Florida, with the outskirts being closer to Caribbean, or as you said, Georgia. There's a separate post talking about these mountains in GTA 6. We know GTA 6 is being based in Florida, a relatively flat state, so it'd be obvious to think that the game will stay true to its setting. However, one interesting thing I found in the diner robbery footage from the leaks is that a huge mountain can be seen in the far distance, particularly around the part where Lucia starts approaching the police car from the passenger side. I'm not sure if anyone else has noticed this, but it's interesting to note, considering Florida is the flattest state in the country, lol. Maybe we can go to other states? The area does resemble rural Georgia. Thoughts? I think it will be more similar to RDR2 than past GTAs where it's only one state. I bet the map will be a hybrid of Georgia and Florida. If not, then Florida and most likely another country like Cuba, or some South American country with mountains. Yes, probably we can visit the state of Georgia. A few weeks ago, someone found out that the prison you can see in one clip is from Georgia as well. Multiple states in the game. The Florida scout lady mentioned Rockstar scouting interiors in Florida and other states in the southeast. Hopefully this means we get towns, or maybe cities in these other states, instead of simply hilly terrain. As this individual pointed out, there's a prison visible in one of the leaked clips, and it bears a striking resemblance to Augusta State Medical Prison. Situated in Grovetown on the county lines of Columbia County and Richmond County in Georgia, United States, this facility houses primarily male inmates with occasional female inmates and has a capacity of 1326. Built in 1982 and operational since 1983, it operates as a close security prison. Augusta State Medical Prison was one of the seven prisons involved in the 2010 Georgia prison strike. With such solid evidence pointing towards Georgia, or at least a portion of it being featured in the GTA 6 map, it's worth noting that Rockstar has done similar things before. In GTA San Andreas, for instance, they created the state of San Andreas, which is a blend of California and Nevada, with Las Venturas mirroring Las Vegas. Euphoria physics has undergone adjustments, and improvements have been made to the ragdoll physics and overall game physics compared to GTA 5. Additionally, Grand Theft Auto 6 will incorporate lighting and skybox systems similar to those seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. This means you can anticipate enhancements like volumetric clouds and better lighting, which mark a significant leap forward, even compared to Red Dead 2. One notable detail from the leaks is the presence of heavy fog, a feature not prominently seen in GTA 5, except for snowy conditions. Advanced weather systems will play a more prominent role in GTA 6, adding depth and immersion to the game world. As for characters, we already have insights into several individuals set to appear in the game. While Jason and Lucia are the main protagonists, the leaks have revealed the existence of other characters. These include Dre, not to be confused with Dr. Dre, Sam, a friend of Dre, Kai Wyman, Zach R.B. Shaw, and several others like Vicky, Iris, Shanice, and YJ. It's quite astonishing that we even have details about their heights. Lucia stands at 5 feet 3 inches, while Jason measures 6 feet 1 inch tall. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. We've also got details on three different gangs set to make an appearance in Vice City. Sand for Sand, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the Far Right Militia. Moving on to tools and items, the list is quite extensive. You can expect to find an auto dialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, a color tool, painkillers, a pool cue, trauma kits, a golf driver, various food and drink items, a golf putter, a USB drive, a golf iron, a crowbar, a golf wedge, a torch, a Slim Jim, a tracker jammer, a duffel bag for stashing your loot, cigarettes, and a backpack, again for storing your loot. When it comes to weaponry, the leaks confirm several options, a rocket launcher, an assault rifle, a baseball bat, a polymer pistol, a knife, a bolt-action sniper rifle, a Molotov cocktail, a spear gun, which is intriguing, a smoke grenade, a compact SMG, a flashbang, a micro SMG, a hunter sniper rifle, a heavy machine gun, an auto rifle, and a pump action shotgun. The weapon wheel system will be divided into three sections, weapons, equipment, and gear. This setup is reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption 2, where you had access to your weapons, items, and horse all in one interface. Notably, we've seen glimpses of the ability to hold different weapons in each hand, and there's an additional quick item inventory in the bottom left corner of your screen. In a video clip, we observed an NPC firing at Jason, and shortly after, we noticed that Jason's health was low. A tip appeared on the left side of the screen, indicating you were injured. 
your health will regenerate slowly. Open your weapon wheel and use a recovery item to replenish your health faster. Unlike GTA 5, where your health regenerated only up to 50%, in GTA 6, it seems that you may regenerate to full health naturally, albeit at a sluggish pace. However, if you want to expedite your healing process, you can employ a medical item. We've got confirmation on seven open world activities that will be available in the game. Currently, these activities include dice, golf, fishing, and races. Additionally, there's a van shipment activity, and in one of the videos, you can spot the spawning location for a delivery van event. This location is near the industrial area of Port Gelhorn, and it's noteworthy that there's a warning poster about security cameras in this area, suggesting the need for caution while attempting to rob the van. Now, regarding robberies, if you've seen the leaks, you might remember the Hank's Waffles robbery, which was quite impressive. Jason and Lucia took on the challenge of robbing this massive diner. In another clip, when Jason was entering a store for a robbery, it became apparent that he possessed an ability allowing him to see through walls. The leaks also mention events related to searching vehicle trunks for something valuable, or perhaps finding nothing at all. Moving on, there's another event type called Deliveries mentioned, specific to Port Gelhorn. It's somewhat challenging to predict the exact nature of these events, but that's all the information we have for now. As for enterable buildings, Grand Theft Auto 6 is set to offer more opportunities for exploration. Confirmed locations you can enter include the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, the Jack of Hearts, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundries. Now, let's discuss multiplayer. In the leaked files, we did come across one multiplayer clip, and in the bottom left corner of the screen, it displayed PL2 of 32, indicating that there were two players in the lobby out of a possible 32 slots. This mirrors the setup seen in Red Dead Online and GTA Online. While it's mentioned as 32 slots, it's worth noting that the player count is actually capped at 30, with two additional spots reserved for spectators. While hopes may be for larger lobbies in GTA 6, at least during this testing phase, they were exploring the feasibility of 30 player lobbies. Let's delve into collectibles in the game. During a scene in one of the clubs with Lucia, we can observe a developer placing a cardboard box on the ground. Notably, these boxes appear to be lootable, with a circle icon indicating their interactability. The debug text on this box reads, collectibles underscore car underscore pass, suggesting that these boxes will contain car part collectibles. Furthermore, there's mention of Wyman car parts boxed generic used, which has sparked speculation that players may collect car parts specifically for a character named Wyman. It's inferred that both Jason and Wyman share an interest in classic cars. Moving on, we've got collectible hats. In a video featuring Jason in an apartment, a developer is seen interacting with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat in the debug text. This implies that one of the ambient activities in the game will involve gathering various articles of clothing, which adds an intriguing layer to gameplay. Now there's a comprehensive list of brands featured in the game, which I won't read out individually, as many may not be of significant importance to the storyline. Instead, I'll display them on your screen for your reference. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to take a closer look. Moreover, we have a list of confirmed animals in the game. As of now, the roster includes snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, boars, wading birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and whales. Keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list, and there's a good chance we'll encounter even more wildlife when the game officially launches. These are simply the animals we have information on at this point in time. In the ongoing exploration of the forthcoming Grand Theft Auto installment, a plethora of new gameplay mechanics has come to light. These enhancements promise to augment the player experience in a variety of ways, ushering in a fresh layer of dynamism and immersion within the game world. First and foremost, players can now maneuver while ensconced in cover. This feature introduces a newfound level of flexibility during engagements, allowing for more strategic positioning in combat scenarios. Additionally, the ability to assume a prone position, a feature conspicuously absent in previous iterations of the game, adds an exciting dimension to gameplay, affording players the capacity to lie flat on the ground, potentially enhancing stealth and tactical maneuvers. Furthermore, the inclusion of loot bags offers a means to store surplus items, expanding inventory management options. An interesting addition is the capability to both drop and retrieve weapons, affording players greater adaptability in response to evolving circumstances. During intense firefights, a novel underfire animation engages, wherein the player character instinctively shields their face from incoming projectiles, providing a more immersive combat experience. In the aftermath of enduring a severe blow, players are granted the opportunity to enact self-revival, potentially turning the tide of adversity. In aiming down sights, the option to seamlessly switch shoulders grants players a tactical advantage, facilitating improved positioning and target acquisition. Moreover, hand-to-hand -hand combat, 
now includes the ability to execute grabs, diversifying the melee combat mechanics. A noteworthy addition to the game is the implementation of buddy communication, embodied in the buddy comms and buddy ping system. Although specific details remain undisclosed, it is plausible that these features will facilitate coordinated actions between the two main characters, Jason and Lucia. Vehicle combat has witnessed a transformation, as shooting from car windows now entails the complete egress of the player character from the window, enabling full 360-degree firing capabilities, thereby revolutionizing vehicular combat dynamics. The intriguing Eagle Eye system, seemingly exclusive to Jason, allows for a form of wall-penetrating vision, although its applicability to Lucia remains uncertain. Enhancements also extend to interactions with in-game elements. Players will find themselves endowed with a broader range of interactions, such as the capacity to carry bodies, engage in robberies, issue threats, and converse with non-playable characters NPCs, during heists. Moreover, the ability to collect additional items, including beer bottles and cans, enriches the gameplay experience. Shifting the focus to new gameplay systems, one particularly exciting addition is the concept of money laundering. During the Hank's Waffles robbery, an icon associated with the car wash property, a washing machine adorned with a dollar sign, has been identified as indicative of money laundering. This suggests that players may have the opportunity to purchase specific types of businesses with the intent of laundering illicit funds in the single-player mode. Moreover, the inclusion of fences introduces a layer of illegal commerce within the game. These fences serve as intermediaries for players to sell illegal items, providing a means to offload contraband and potentially profit from illicit endeavors. The inclusion of hacking mechanics is confirmed to some extent in the game. Lucia is equipped with a set of intriguing tools, including a tracker jammer, immobilizer bypass, USB drive, and an auto dialer. As of now, it remains unconfirmed whether Jason will also have access to these items. Historical leaks from a few years ago hinted that Lucia would be the designated hacker, so the extent of hacking abilities for each character awaits further clarification. Among the event types within the game, two distinct categories emerge, pragmatic cool and chaotic and romantic cool. While specific details surrounding these events are not fully disclosed, they introduce intriguing possibilities for players to navigate. Furthermore, during robberies, players will have the capacity to issue commands to the other character involved. In a video clip from the leaks depicting a robbery, a tip notification suggests checking in with Jason or holding for more options. This implies that players can give their partner commands during a heist. Notably, prompts to instruct Jason to either surrender or follow indicate a degree of control over both characters simultaneously, simplifying coordination compared to relying solely on AI behavior. The witness system and police recognition within the game hold significant implications. During the Hank's Waffle robbery video, an interesting detail surfaces regarding the Wanted Level Stars interface which includes the term full description. This strongly suggests that witnesses within the game possess comprehensive knowledge about the player character. Consequently, law enforcement is expected to recognize the player once Lucia enters a police vehicle. Additionally, a transition is observed from no vehicle description to full vehicle description in response to Lucia's actions. This implies that even after losing a wanted level, if the police spot the player in the same vehicle, they will react accordingly, potentially leading to an arrest or hostile encounter. During the robbery sequence, Jason can be seen actively preventing customers marked with yellow icons above their heads from calling the authorities or fleeing the scene. Notably, an NPC within the diner exhibits a yellow icon above her head. Following Lucia's exit from the diner, the icon begins to flicker. Subsequently, as Lucia approaches a police car surrounded by law enforcement, the icon shifts to red. The female NPC then departs from the diner, making eye contact with Lucia before hastening away. These developments underscore the sophistication of NPC interactions, presenting a notable advancement in the game's artificial intelligence systems. The prospect of item sharing between the characters Jason and Lucia is on the horizon. A notable example emerges from a video clip where Jason pilfers items from containers, opting to retain some while distributing others. This cooperative element extends to the unlocking of doors and gates, exemplified in a video featuring Jason within the Sand for Sand area, which, if you recall, is the moniker of a gang in GTA 6. In this particular clip, Jason stealthily maneuvers past a red truck, revealing a door from an import garage building bearing the descriptor door panel locked in its debug text. In juxtaposition, a gate within the same clip indicates door unlocked, signifying the necessity of unlocking specific access points. Subsequently, we delve into an extensive catalog of new features, commencing with an upgraded AI system. In a visual excerpt, 
The enemy AI exhibits an inclination to open fire upon Lucia when she pivots to face them. This hints at AI entities possessing a heightened acumen for discerning opportune moments to engage in combat. Impressively, AI units adapt their elevation relative to surrounding obstacles, steering clear of potentially disadvantageous head-glitching tactics. Furthermore, a prudent alteration manifests as AI adversaries opting to lower their stance during weapon reloads, a judicious move compared to reloading while exposed in the open. Enhanced AI combat tactics are evident in their lateral strafing maneuvers during shootouts. Notably, NPC behavior has undergone substantial refinement. As discernible in the leaked materials, AI characters no longer traverse the game world in solitary isolation, but now frequently assemble into groups. This intriguing development is reminiscent of a feature previously observed in Red Dead Redemption 2, where NPCs often moved in cohesive units. An illustrative instance materializes in a video where Lucia, carrying a duffel bag, shares the sidewalk with three individuals attired as tourists, who engage in animated conversation while strolling past her. This signifies a notable departure from GTA V, where pedestrians predominantly ambulated in solitary fashion, contrasting with the forthcoming inclusion of group dynamics, perhaps even encompassing couples or social cliques, enhancing the verisimilitude of the game world. A notable addition to the gameplay dynamics is the option to voluntarily surrender to law enforcement during a robbery. The consequences of such an action remain shrouded in uncertainty, warranting further exploration upon the game's release. Furthermore, the mundane act of purchasing gumballs from vending machines emerges as a potentially restorative action. While it can be surmised that gumballs may offer a healing effect, Concrete details regarding their function remain pending confirmation. In a nod to realism, akin to GTA V, the forthcoming installment acknowledges the accumulation of dirt on your character's clothing, reflecting the wear and tear endured during your escapades. The hair and facial hair systems exhibit intriguing variability, with different versions of Jason observable in the leaks, sporting varying hairstyles, including long hair, short hair, stubble, and clean-shaven looks. While not definitively confirmed, this strongly alludes to the introduction of a hair growth system, akin to the one featured in Red Dead Redemption 2. Given the precedents established in the latter game, the likelihood of such a system in GTA 6 appears high. Expanding the repertoire of actions available to players, the ability to consume items directly from your inventory is showcased. When Jason visits a gas station, the inventory reveals options for wine, soda, and fruit consumption, implying that you can partake in these items at your convenience, akin to the mechanics present in Red Dead and GTA Online. Introducing a novel event type named Cop Trap, the game incorporates scenarios where law enforcement sets up traps at multiple locations. While the precise details of these traps remain undisclosed, it is apparent that police will employ diverse tactics to ensnare players. An overhaul in the police system introduces the concept of time until cops dispatch. In this iteration, criminal activities do not instantly summon law enforcement. Instead, players are afforded a brief window to execute an escape before the police response commences. The inclusion of security cameras as a surveillance mechanism adds complexity to evading detection. Unlike the conventional implementation in GTA Online, these cameras employ a detection meter, reminiscent of mechanics seen in games like Payday 2 or Payday 3. Players must act swiftly to evade the camera's line of sight within a specified time frame, akin to a filling bar to avoid detection. This novel approach to security cameras introduces a fresh layer of challenge and strategy to evading law enforcement. Players will have the newfound ability to restrain non-player characters, NPCs. The primary method, as gleaned from the leaks, involves the use of zip ties. This restraint option becomes particularly pertinent during robbery scenarios, where players can employ zip ties to immobilize NPCs. A novel feature that comes to light is the capacity to loot vehicles. A fleeting glimpse in the Hank's Waffles video reveals a button prompt in the bottom right corner of the screen, labeled Examine SUV. This hints at the prospect of inspecting random cars and potentially engaging in vehicular theft. To make car theft more engaging, an advanced hijacking system is on the horizon. The existence of the immobilizer bypass device previously discussed suggests that pilfering high-end vehicles will pose a greater challenge. Additionally, an item known as the Slim Jim will facilitate unlocking older model cars. These mechanics collectively point to the notion that hijacking automobiles will become a more intricate endeavor, with the potential for car theft endeavors to end in failure. Furthermore, two intriguing event types emerge, namely carjacking, cat, and carjacking, advanced AI. These events suggest that the vehicular hijacking process will incorporate nuanced elements, potentially involving the interference of an AI-controlled entity. GTA 6 promises to deliver an augmented vehicular experience through improved vehicle damage and handling. In a displayed video clip, 
As Lucia attempts to evade pursuing law enforcement, cars suffer more impactful damage. Notably, various parts of the vehicles, such as the front fender and hood, demonstrate more realistic deformation and fragmentation. The in-game interiors now feature functional GPS and waypoint systems on the dashboard, enhancing navigational convenience for players driving in the first-person perspective. Additionally, players have the option to enter a car via the passenger seat, offering flexibility in vehicle interaction. A hallmark of GTA 6 is its meticulous attention to detail. Players can encounter raccoons engaging in behavior, such as rummaging through trash cans and pilfering food bags. These instances are categorized as world events, denoted as raccoon climb out of garbage, raccoon rummage trash, and raccoon steal food bag. While numerous other subtle details enrich the game world, they are too numerous to enumerate here. Interested individuals can explore these intricacies further through the provided link. Expect a heightened level of auditory realism in GTA 6. Weapon sounds exhibit enhanced clarity and realism, with greater volume. The sounds of bodies impacting the ground will resonate with a more substantial thud, evoking a heightened sense of impact. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements with heightened realism, while items will produce varying auditory responses contingent on the surrounding context. In essence, sound design in GTA 6 aims to authentically replicate real-life auditory experiences. Fascinating developments. Several months ago, a colossal trove of leaked data unveiled a wealth of intriguing random events, world encounters, that promised to enrich the GTA 6 experience. While I won't delve into all of them, the list is nothing short of captivating. Events range from mundane occurrences like parking disputes to more enthralling incidents such as donut burnouts, protests, and even someone suffering a concussion. The prospect of navigating the lifelike world of Vice City, teeming with such diverse activities is undeniably exhilarating. I strongly recommend pausing the video to peruse this remarkable compilation. Additionally, we have been privy to an extensive catalogue of vehicles slated to appear in GTA 6. These vehicles, gleaned from both in-game leaks and files, I encourage you to peruse this comprehensive list at your leisure. It resides on page 30 of the document. Furthermore, the leaks have divulged a plethora of confirmed locations within Vice City and its environs. Naturally, Vice City itself takes center stage, while several districts and neighborhoods will pepper its landscape. Notable locations include Edgewater, North Bay City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Port Gellhorn, intriguingly, appears as a separate city akin to Sandy Shores or Polito Bay from previous iterations. The list extends to encompass Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, the Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Ekin, Fanaka, Underwater, and Relief. Each of these major locations contains a multitude of sub-locations, a testament to the meticulous world-building evident in the game. As if this weren't enough, the dedicated community has endeavored to construct a speculative map of GTA 6 based on coordinates extracted from the leaks. While the precise layout of the map's northern region remains uncertain, the map preview encapsulates the sprawling Vice City to the south and Port Gellhorn on the left. We'll delve into the upcoming changes to the AI systems in Grand Theft Auto 6 by Rockstar. We'll explore a patent that introduced Introduces a groundbreaking system unprecedented in gaming, promising a revolutionary shift in how AI operates within games. Additionally, we'll delve into other intricacies concerning AI and non-playable characters in GTA 6, including insights from a job listing at Rockstar's new LA studio, shedding light on NPC dialogue. We'll also examine NPC behaviors in response to their environment and their integration with social media, enhancing immersion and complexity in player interactions. Let's kick off with Rockstar's innovative AI system set to debut in Grand Theft Auto 6. Described by Rockstar as the most significant and immersive evolution of the series, the emphasis on immersion is evident in their patent filings. We'll focus on one particularly intriguing patent, unveiling a new system poised to revolutionize AI in gaming. Considering Rockstar's commitment to delivering the most immersive experience yet, it's evident that NPCs and AI will play pivotal roles. This patent specifically pertains to animations in GTA 6, aptly named System and Method for Virtual Character Locomotion Back in 2020, Rockstar Games unveiled an innovative system that will debut in GTA 6. Now the details might sound a bit complex, but essentially, this patent outlines a fresh approach to animating characters and imbuing them with dynamic intelligence. These characters will now possess a kind of virtual brain, allowing them to react to their environment, other NPCs, weather, and even their mood, influencing their animations on the fly. Before this advancement, 
Each character's animation had to be painstakingly recorded in a studio equipped with motion capture technology. This process involved attaching markers to actors' suits and compiling animations into what's called an animation tree. This method was resource-intensive, limiting the variety of animations Rockstar could include in their games. For instance, in GTA V and Red Dead Redemption 2, each NPC had its own animation tree, containing all their actions. Animation trees essentially stack animations, blending them together seamlessly and transitioning between them based on player input and in-game conditions. Additionally, motion matching, a feature seen in GTA V and RDR2, automatically selects animations based on player actions and the surrounding environment. This results in fluid and lifelike character movements, such as running while shooting, creating a more immersive experience for players. With GTA 6, Rockstar introduces an innovative system designed to optimize resources and streamline animation data. This approach allows for more content within the game while offering a broader array of animations. It shares similarities with motion matching but diverges in its utilization of a new framework. Rather than relying on conventional animation trees, character animations will be predominantly data-driven, adapting dynamically to environmental cues. These animations will be categorized into distinct motion types, representing unique character styles. Each character will possess a designated motion type, enhancing the depth and realism of their movements. As an illustration, let's consider various states such as tired, injured, and normal, each corresponding to a set of animations. Additionally, every character will possess their own blackboard, a virtual representation of their current state and surroundings. This blackboard stores crucial data including the character's condition, location, weather, temperature, and more. Utilizing this information, the game's code dynamically selects appropriate animations or styles for the character, enhancing their responsiveness to the virtual world. For instance, in the Ocean Drive scene from the trailer, we observe a character seated on the sidewalk. As a group of NPCs pass by, he attentively observes them, reacting accordingly to their presence. With this system, the gameplay experience is poised to become even more immersive. It will prioritize environmental data, including the presence of other NPCs and vehicles, alongside factors influencing the character's mood. Consequently, NPCs will exhibit previously unseen levels of reactivity, shifting focus to a noteworthy job listing from Rockstar's recruitment opportunities. Last year, Rockstar opened a new studio in Los Angeles. From what we know, it's purely a new motion capture studio, so they have another one besides the one in New York, mainly to record NPC dialogue probably. This discovery confirms that. I checked Rockstar's careers page just now, and there's a job offer at Rockstar LA for associate writer, pedestrian, and ambient dialogue. This could indicate that they are still writing and recording GTA 6 NPC dialogue right now. This suggests that the development team is currently engaged in scripting and recording NPC dialogue for GTA 6. You can find the specific responsibilities outlined in the job description provided. It says, write funny, character-driven, and unique dialogue for our ambient population. Work with key stakeholders to understand and support the technical requirements for player-led, dialogue-based interactions with our ambient population. Provide exciting dialogue that works within the strict constraints of a complex game system. Undertake self-motivated research and leverage that research to enrich your writing. Understand and match the tone of our games. This underscores the commitment of Rockstar to ensuring that GTA 6 remains true to its franchise roots. Aligning NPC dialogue with the established GTA universe bodes well for the game's authenticity. Shifting gears to another aspect related to NPCs, let's delve into how they'll integrate with social media. Not only will NPCs exhibit more lifelike behaviors and interactions with their surroundings, but they'll also engage with social media platforms, a novel addition to Grand Theft Auto 6. Here's a rundown of the phones observed. NPCs will be equipped with various phone models, as evident from both images and the trailer. Notably, NPCs will actively engage with their phones, which boast fully functional cameras and displays, an improvement over GTA V. For instance, in a scene from the trailer set on Ocean Drive, an NPC can be observed capturing photos or videos with their phone. The displayed imagery accurately reflects the NPC's point of view, suggesting the possibility for NPCs to record and share in-game content on the virtual social media platforms. Let's delve into an intriguing Reddit post that delves into this aspect further. Here's why NPC-recorded TikToks aren't as far-fetched as you think. A common speculation point I see on this subreddit is the potential for NPC-recorded TikToks for the game's social media that was teased in the trailer. Like someone filming you commit a crime and you later seeing that post online. Many have dismissed this as far-fetched in terms of development complexity, 
but I wanted to discuss why it's plausible. Firstly, I think we've already seen a system that could serve as a base for building a TikTok-like system, the Instant Replay, Rockstar Editor from GTA 5. Given this game is more of a sandbox with physics rather than a competitive shooter, where replay systems are typically seen, it's even more impressive to consider this system in GTA 5. It accurately records and replays events just as they happened, with every car, ragdoll, etc. Moving just as it did originally in the moment. The tech behind this isn't actually recording like a camera and replaying, it's really just recreating it, which again makes it impressive how much time Rockstar put into it, making it accurate. To me, this feels like what could be used as a base for a system where NPCs record their own videos from their perspective. This next thing is something I could have sworn I remember hearing long ago, but can't seem to find, and was hoping someone on here remembers too. Back before GTA 5's launch, there were details revealed through various interviews, magazines, etc., and I remember hearing or reading something about being able to watch your own crimes on Weasel News on the TV. This obviously didn't end up in the game, but there is a slight remnant of it in GTA Online. Am I the only one who remembers this being mentioned for single player though? Maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. Anyways, this last point is actually from the trailer. At the 033 mark, in this scene we see a lot of NPCs hanging out on a busy street, and one NPC in particular recording on his phone. As we know Rockstar's trailers are always all in engine, no CGI cinematics, so I think it's worth noting that it looks as if his screen is accurately showing what he's looking at. My screenshot is zoomed in, but if you got hat mark on the trailer, you can see it matches up to what he's looking up at. Could this be a hint towards said system, or just a nice detail? Rockstar has a reputation for delivering what they showcase in their trailers, focusing on virtual navigation in Grand Theft Auto 6. This patent sheds light on the intricacies of in-game traffic, promising a heightened level of realism compared to previous iterations. We'll explore the notable enhancements Rockstar has implemented, creating a more sophisticated system that elevates the gaming experience. By examining various sources, we aim to provide a comprehensive overview of this navigation system, offering insights into what Rockstar has in store for NPC navigation in GTA 6. Let's delve into the details of this intriguing patent. System and method for virtual navigation in a gaming environment. Let's break down this patent for a moment. Essentially, it gives us insight into how non-playable characters operate within the game environment. They explain that NPCs' actions are controlled through artificial intelligence, allowing for real-time decision-making based on preset algorithms. In many systems, this is achieved through nodes and links, where each node contains important data that influences NPC movement. For example, in a game involving vehicles, this data could include factors like vehicle speed, lane width, road type, and number of lanes. Now, these nodes are essentially waypoints that NPCs follow to navigate from one point to another. In simpler sections of the road, these nodes might be connected linearly, guiding NPCs straightforwardly. But in more complex areas, like junctions, the nodes become more intricate. Take a basic intersection, for instance. A vehicle approaching it would have several exit options, leading to a branching network of nodes. In older systems, like the one used in GTA 5, NPCs might make decisions at these junctions based on simple rules, sometimes leading to behaviors that seem a bit random. However, this conventional method has its limitations, especially when it comes to handling various factors like weather conditions, changing lanes, parking cars, or anticipating road exits. In these situations, the old system could falter, as NPCs might not adapt well to the dynamic environment. One downside of the node-based system is its limited capacity to replicate real-life factors that humans naturally consider. Another drawback is its constraint in automating NPCs effectively. Due to memory and processing limitations, only a set number of NPC-controlled cars can be spawned in the game. Naturally, players crave a more immersive experience with a greater number of NPC-controlled cars on the road. Moreover, in conventional systems, NPCs often repeat the same actions, and some may even disappear as players get closer to them. Additionally, in GTA 5, the system relies on local traffic avoidance for NPCs to steer clear of collisions. This means that NPCs continuously scan their immediate surroundings each frame for any obstacles like vehicles, pedestrians, or objects. Using a front-facing polygon, they gather data about the road layout and calculate the optimal steering angle to dodge obstacles or stay on the road. It's worth noting that this process occurs independently for each frame, without any reference to previous frames. This results in slower detection, as the system may not recognize a road blockage promptly. Instead, it interprets the obstruction as something to be avoided, without distinguishing it as a complete road blockage. 
Recognizing these limitations, Rockstar has engineered an NPC system that addresses these shortcomings of conventional systems. This advanced system efficiently manages NPC nodes and node graphs, yielding optimal outcomes while circumventing hardware and software constraints. NPCs in this system demonstrate heightened spatial awareness and adaptability, capable of altering routes based on real-time data from the environment. Moreover, this innovative system synergizes with the tagging mechanism discussed in earlier discussions. Through node analysis, the system identifies tags, such as indicating a road leads to a junction unsuitable for large vehicles. Consequently, large vehicles are deterred from entering. Furthermore, NPCs within this system consider various attributes of vehicle types, models, including speed restrictions, acceleration and braking capabilities, top speeds, cornering abilities, and vehicle size. NPCs will consider a plethora of data from their surroundings, leading to heightened situational awareness. Video games are populated by NPCs who are able to make real-time decisions based on their environment. Games use a specific system for NPCs to traverse the game world. However, this system is very limited, and thus the decisions NPCs can make are very limited as well. NPCs in vehicles only consider their close vicinity, but nothing else. Also, to avoid collisions, NPCs only consider the last generated frame and base their reaction on that. No prior frames are considered. Rockstar has invented a new system which aims to fix these issues and make NPCs more intelligent and thus make the game world feel more realistic. NPCs can now consider factors like traffic, as well as account for changing lanes when parking cars, anticipating a road exit, weather conditions, and the like. There are more than a predetermined number of NPC-controlled cars in the game now for a realistic experience for the player. Vehicles can now plan accordingly in case there is any type of road blockage. This also applies to police cars being able to navigate their way through traffic during a chase. I'd like to highlight another breakdown of the patent, which dates back three years ago. Let's delve into it. Take away from yesterday's patent post. I've read over the patent post from yesterday, and I noticed a lot of people missed the most exciting information in it. I'll sum it up in non-technical language. It's essentially a method to improve vehicle AL when driving currently. When NPCs drive on the road, they can sense a few cars around them to determine crashes or other things to drive around. This is dumb AL, as it has very few factors to take into account, and requires a lot of computational resources. This is why vehicles despawn when far away to free up the CPU. Rockstar's patent describes a system that primarily will change this and give NPCs more situational awareness. They will essentially have an objective of navigating from one location to another. Simplified, but is essential in making routines similar to RDR2 and be able to take into account other external factors. Coolest of all, NPCs will still exist when your game isn't rendering them in this implementation. Specific examples mentioned by Rockstar state they will be able to use weather conditions, traffic, and crashes to determine where to go. Some areas might be dangerous in the rain, they might avoid it. If an area has too much traffic, they will avoid it. Possibly destructible environmental areas could be reacted to. Similar to bridges in Just Cause, this point is speculation, however. Cars will also be able to take into account number of lanes and speed in their decisions. NPCs will be also able to take into account high-speed chases and be able to navigate if they themselves are speeding. There will also be other reactions that are mentioned specifically, such as changing lanes before a highway exit appears, and as Rockstar puts it, driving slower on residential type roads or having to perform certain maneuvers to avoid oncoming traffic on single lane streets. The large part they also mention is this implementation uses a lot less processing power. The NPC schedules can be relayed by a central server, they could possibly use the console itself as well, and it doesn't require the same constant surrounding analysis. As previous Al Rockstar mentions, this will allow them to have denser traffic with the same resources. A large aim also seems to be realism. Rockstar's patent mentions realistic reactions to various factors as being the main intent. For example, NPCs will each have different driving ability levels, based on the driver and the car. Essentially, each driver will have its own profile, and have unique driving characteristics as well as skill level. Some might speed, 
others might not. Great news for GTA fans, GTA 6 is making some big changes to the series. We've got a load of interesting info about the game that you should definitely hear about. Just a heads up, the details we've got are from leaked online footage, but sorry, no links or showing it. Still, loads of cool stuff to share, like new animals, AI changes, RPG elements, and more. Let's dive in. Fact 1 interactions with NPCs are getting way cooler. You'll have choices like threatening, robbing, shooting, or restraining them. Some missions will even have gesture-based actions, like Red Dead Redemption 2. Car damage is more realistic, and the insides are crazy detailed, with working dashboards. Fact 2. Let's talk weapons. GTA 6 is changing things up, taking a page from Red Dead Redemption 2. Instead of a big weapon wheel, you'll have slots for small firearms, melee weapons, rifles, and shotguns. No unlimited weapons, but you can drop and pick them up as you go. Fact 3. In the developmental phase, there was a sighting of Arthur Morgan's hat, though it's uncertain if this will make it to the final game. Players now have the option to surrender to the police during a robbery, which adds a thrilling twist. Police response time has been updated to feel more real, displaying a timer that varies based on the crime's severity. A murder, for instance, prompts a faster response than a robbery. The maximum wanted level is capped at 5 stars in GTA 6, and the possibility of a 6-star level seems improbable in the current gameplay being developed. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. Fact 4. Police AI has significantly improved from the last game. Instead of rushing in blindly, they now exhibit more realistic and intelligent behavior. If you commit a crime and flee in a vehicle, cops will note the specific vehicle and license plate, making evading them more challenging. Fact 5. Let's talk about the strong emphasis on indoor locations in GTA 6. There's a bunch of different interiors to explore, like nightclubs, motels, hotels, restaurants, pawn shops, supermarkets, fast food joints, gun stores, shooting ranges, and the Vice City Metro Station. Plus, they've added working elevators for a more immersive feel. Interestingly, there's a risk of players getting banned from stores, which adds a twist. Fact 6. Moving on to the characters. GTA 6 introduces two protagonists, Jason, played by Brian Zampella, and Lucia, portrayed by Alexandra C. Ekavari, who happens to be the franchise's first playable female character. You can switch between them instantly. They're also a couple, drawing inspiration from Bonnie and Clyde. Fact 7 clothing in the game behaves realistically. You can wear accessories like sunglasses, watches, wristbands, and hats in different ways. The detail is pretty cool, with sweat, dirt, and wrinkles adding to the realism. Fact 8. GTA 6, internally dubbed Project Americas, had a code name during development, like GTA 5, called Rush, and Red Dead Redemption 2, Bonnier. Originally, the plan was for a bigger map covering North and South America, but changes in Rockstar's approach scaled it down. Still, it's shaping up to be a memorable experience with its features and locations. Fact 9. GTA 6's map is officially bigger than GTA 5. This time, Vice City takes the spotlight, a Miami-inspired area with its surroundings, giving players a vast and diverse landscape. There's even a lake in one of the videos that hints at a significant part of Florida being in the game. Fact 10. Hold on to your seats. The jetpack's back. Shooting out of cars is on the cards too, adding more thrill. And get this, GTA 6 introduces 18 brand new vehicles to the franchise. Fact 11. In GTA 6, you'll bump into various events, like random mugger encounters and NPC-hosted yard sales. There are hints at riding events, which could mean horse riding, maybe even involving the Red Dead Redemption 2 team. Fact Fact 12. New firepower alert. The spear gun's making its first appearance, letting players shoot underwater spears at their targets. Plus, there's a bunch of gear you can use, like binoculars, cutoff tools, flashlights, immobilizer bypasses, slim gyms, USB drives, tasers, zip ties, and auto dialers. Fact 13. The game has RPG stuff like weight and muscle management, seen in the Spool Couple Workout Challenge. Leaked footage showed Jason and Lucia's apartments. For example, Jason's place has a bathtub for in-game baths. Fact 14. Rockstar's planning to add new missions and cities regularly after GTA 6 launches. Whether this is for online or story mode isn't clarified yet. Expect an improved cover system, better than what we've seen in other Rockstar games. Fact 15. Make sure not to overlook the Kingston Hotel. It's a lively spot with pool parties and live music, making GTA 6 his world even more vibrant. Fact 16. GTA 6 gets more interactive with working CCTV cameras that you can wreck. Be wary of cop traps, spots where cops wait to nab you, and be prepared for intense moments with dirty cop shakedown events. Fact 17. As part of the immersive feel, the game includes DUI sobriety tests, but it's unclear if they're for the player character or random NPCs. Rockstar's focus on detail shines, even with fully working gumball machines in the game. Fact 18. 
The gunplay in GTA 6 resembles what we've seen in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Max Payne 3. It might be worth giving those games a shot before GTA 6 comes out, if you haven't already. And activities? GTA 6 is loaded with options, from fishing and crazy golf to basketball, football and soccer. There are gyms to work out in, a yacht club, and even a racetrack. Fact 19. Get ready for a modern-day setting, post-GTA 5 events. The game is meticulously detailed, recreating many Miami landmarks like a grand tennis court, a bustling football stadium, and a vibrant amphitheater. The map includes an airport and a functional tram system, with an airport stop. And that's not all. The Florida Keys and a swampy region, the Grass Rivers reminiscent of the Everglades, are part of the game. Players can ride swamp boats in this area. Fact 20 weapons are diverse in GTA 6. You've got melee options like golf clubs, pool cues, crowbars, and bats, along with a range of firearms from pistols to snipers and RPGs. You can even customize how your character holds weapons. Plus, there's a bunch of throwable stuff like grenades, molotovs, and even golf balls. Fact 21. One major upgrade in GTA 6 is NPC behavior. NPCs will come in different sizes and shapes, and their reactions will feel super real. If you wave a gun around, folks nearby might freak out. The game's also getting an intense injury system, including concussions. Fact 22. Next up, the amazing visuals and new features. Your character will grow facial hair naturally over time. Plus, the GTA 6 world will have a social platform called What's Up, kinda like a fun version of WhatsApp. And good news for fans, spoof versions of social media like Life Invader, Facebook, Bleeder, Twitter, and Snapmatic, Instagram, are making a comeback. Fact 23. Now let's talk about our main characters, Jason and Lucia, each with their own and a shared inventory. Your inventory can carry various items like wine, soda, and fruit. Also, there's a duffel bag system for easy transportation of supplies and weapons. Fact 24. Rockstar's being more cautious in storytelling, steering clear of offensive jokes, and being considerate about groups that might feel targeted. The story goes through chapters, like Red Dead Redemption 2's approach. Fact 25 GTA 6 is loaded with side activities, from backyard wrestling and racing to UFO events and beach bonfires. Small stuff matters too, like picking up cans from the ground. Jason and Lucia, the main characters, have special abilities similar to those in GTA 5. Fact 26. Jason and Lucia's safe house is a motel, a hub for their activities. The game's world has various street gangs, each with its own vibe. Characters have different personalities like romantic, chaotic romantic, cool, pragmatic chaotic, and pragmatic cool. Fact 27 gameplay tweaks in GTA 6 include the ability to zip tie NPCs for stealth elements and the option to carry bodies, adding depth to stealth mechanics. Fact 28 robberies are a big deal in GTA 6, ranging from big heists to smaller scores. You've got easy scores like hitting bingo body shops, burnout skirts at Cafe Caraway, clothing stores, food trucks, massage parlors, and more. And now, there's even the chance to rob shipping containers, which adds a whole new level of excitement. Fact 29 gameplay is stepping up. For the first time in GTA, you can crouch and go prone, bringing in some tactical vibes. RPG elements are also in, with hints about hunger leveling and animal interactions, adding depth to the game. Fact 30. Excitingly, the Malibu Club and Ocean View Hotel are back in GTA 6. There are hints at events like Lost at Sea Island Camp and Lost Plane, suggesting possible island scenarios like Guarma from an earlier game. Fact 31. While exploring, you'll meet loads of wildlife alligators, bears, boars, dogs, snakes, raccoons, birds, frogs, bald cats, and rodents. You'll also spot symbols for plants and toxic waste around the game. Fact 32. In the game, watch out for the Scarface crime scene. Maybe a nod to Tony Montana as an Easter egg. There's also a murder mystery called Missing Tourists. Plus, spots for campers are scattered around. Looks like YouTube is gearing up to investigate the leaked GTA 6 trailer. We're going to dive into all of that and more in this video. For those who might not remember or didn't catch it, Rockstar had a special plan for unveiling the first official GTA 6 trailer. It started with an announcement from Sam Hauser, the president of Rockstar Games. On November 8th, he posted on the Rockstar Games Newswire, a message from Rockstar Games. Next month marks the 25th anniversary of Rockstar Games. Thanks to the incredible support of our players worldwide, we've had the chance to create games we're truly passionate about. Without you, none of this would be possible, and we are so grateful for you joining us on this journey. In 1998, Rockstar Games was founded on the idea that video games could become as essential to culture as any other form of entertainment. We hope that we have made games you love, and that we're part of that evolution. We're very excited to announce that in early December, we'll be releasing the first trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto. We look forward to many more years of sharing these experiences with you all. Thank you, Sam Hauser. We knew the GTA 6 trailer was set to drop in early December, but the exact date was a mystery until December 1st. 
That's when Rockstar Games posted on all their social media accounts, announcing that Trailer 1 would be released on Tuesday, December 5th at 9am Eastern Time. They also mentioned that the trailer would be available on YouTube. It was set to be a premiere, which for those who don't know, means the whole video is uploaded to YouTube with a countdown clock. This wasn't just Rockstar doing their thing, they had a partnership with YouTube. They even had a custom URL and a special countdown timer for the video. This was definitely a collaboration. However, a little over 12 hours before the trailer was supposed to go live on December 4th in the evening, it leaked. The trailer surfaced on X, formerly Twitter, from an anonymous account named Trailer Leaker. Their handle was GTA 6 Trailer Leak, and they posted the entire Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer in very low quality, with a Buy Bitcoin watermark and the caption BTC with a dollar sign. Rockstar Games quickly found out about it and got X to suspend the account. The account was actually threatening to release a high quality version of the trailer without the watermark if it reached a certain number of views or hit specific milestones. When that happened, Rockstar Games had to go into damage control mode. They put out an announcement saying, Our trailer has leaked, so please watch the real thing on YouTube. So, Rockstar ended up releasing the trailer early, basically cancelling the premiere countdown that was supposed to happen on YouTube. It was a mess, neither Rockstar Games nor YouTube wanted this to happen. This raised the question, how did this leak occur? Was it a Rockstar Games employee or someone at YouTube? The only people with access to the trailer would be those responsible for Rockstar's YouTube account, and it's unlikely they would leak it. However, YouTube also has access to the trailer. The people behind the scenes at YouTube, high up enough to have access, could see and download the trailer. Naturally, fingers started pointing at YouTube. Now it looks like YouTube has officially responded. According to Tom Henderson over at Insider Gaming, from what I can gather, YouTube has investigated employees breaching their contractual agreements on two different occasions in the past 18 months due to employees accessing content on the back end. Following today, which unfortunately had some leaks surrounding Sony's state of play, we can presumably expect a third investigation fairly soon. Clearly one of the occasions mentioned in the past 18 months is the GTA 6 trailer leak. Honestly, this theory that someone from YouTube leaked it has been around since day one. With all the hype around GTA 6, it's not surprising someone couldn't keep it under wraps and leaked it, causing a huge stir. There have been so many leaks in the past few years, right before major events or trailer drops, making it more obvious that YouTube might be the source. This seems to be what happened with GTA 6, because the people with access are supposed to sign contracts or NDAs, preventing them from sharing this kind of information. So, what will Rockstar Games do next for GTA 6? Almost everything about this game has been leaked, from initial details like Project Americas, which turned out to be true after Rockstar's own investigation, to the fact that it's set in Vice City with a female and male protagonist duo. There were the major leaks in September 2022, the leaks right before the trailer was supposed to drop, and then the trailer itself leaking 12 to 15 hours early. It's unclear what Rockstar will do for the next trailer, character reveals, or gameplay footage. Will they risk uploading it to YouTube again after this disaster? Or will they stick to their newswire, despite insiders and data miners being able to access and share that information? Rockstar is definitely in a tricky situation. At least it's good news that YouTube is trying to crack down on this. They might be doing this because they could face massive lawsuits. The GTA 6 reveal was supposed to be one of the biggest events in video game history, and it was ruined because someone behind the scenes at YouTube likely leaked it. So, the big question is whether Rockstar Games will go back to YouTube. One way they could avoid a similar issue is by not announcing when they're going to upload the next trailer. If I had to guess, YouTube probably won't get another exclusive deal or a premiere. If Rockstar were smart, they'd upload the trailer shortly before the announced drop date and keep it private until then. That seems like the safest route. What do you guys think? How do you think Rockstar will handle future video uploads? Will they stick with YouTube? Move to their Newswire page, their own Rockstar Games site, or use another method entirely? When we talk about the positive aspects of this partnership, it's essential to highlight the potential benefits that can emerge from Rockstar's newfound support for the modding community. One of the significant upsides is the acknowledgement of the brilliant and skilled developers behind the modding scene. For years, these developers have worked tirelessly to create unique and engaging experiences within the GTA universe. With Rockstar stepping into a collaborative space with CFX, there's an opportunity for a more symbiotic relationship. 
The infusion of official support could mean more resources, tools, and encouragement for modders to continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible within the GTA ecosystem. This collaboration might lead to innovative gameplay features, improved server stability, and an overall better experience for both players and content creators. Moreover, the recognition from a gaming giant like Rockstar could open doors for these modders in the industry. It may pave the way for potential collaborations, official partnerships, or even job opportunities within the gaming development sphere. This, in turn, could elevate the modding community to a more prominent and respected position within the gaming landscape. However, it's crucial to approach these potential benefits with cautious optimism. While the partnership appears promising on the surface, the reality lies in how Rockstar manages the delicate balance between maintaining control over its intellectual property and allowing creative freedom for the modding community. The outcome will heavily depend on Rockstar's willingness to foster collaboration, rather than imposing strict regulations. As GTA 6 draws closer, the impact of this collaboration will become more apparent. Whether it becomes a model for future partnerships between game developers and modders, or encounters challenges that hinder its success remains to be seen. The dynamics between Rockstar and the modding community could shape the future landscape of custom servers, roleplay experiences, and the overall modding scene in the gaming world. Stay tuned as we continue to explore and analyze the evolving relationship between Rockstar and the modding community. On the positive side, there's a glimmer of hope that Rockstar's acknowledgement of mods enhancing the player experience could pave the way for more modding support in GTA 6. This shift in perspective might lead to a more collaborative environment where modders can contribute to the game's richness without fear of stringent restrictions. With Rockstar officially and financially supporting 5M, the CFX team gains more resources to elevate the GTA 6 server. This could mean a server even more impressive than the ones they currently run. The fact that 5M is now a Rockstar Games product suggests a vested interest in its success, promising additional funding and manpower to ensure its flourishing. An intriguing prospect emerges concerning the accessibility of custom servers. Currently limited to PC players, there's speculation that GTA 6 might integrate dedicated servers within the game itself, eliminating the need for external programs like 5M. If this unfolds, it opens the door for console players to join the custom server experience, broadening the player base and community. Moreover, Rockstar seems to be attuned to fan desires. Despite a larger audience watching RP compared to those actively playing it, Rockstar appears committed to making improvements. Their intent to let custom servers thrive suggests a more fan-centric approach, acknowledging and catering to the desires of the gaming community. However, there are potential pitfalls to consider. The most glaring concern is Rockstar's inclination to monetize these servers. While the specifics remain uncertain, it's almost certain that some form of monetization, be it through custom server shark cards or a pay-to-play system, will be implemented. This could introduce a paywall, affecting the accessibility and enjoyment of custom servers for certain players. As we navigate through this evolving landscape of Rockstar's partnership with 5M, the delicate balance between fostering creativity and implementing monetization strategies will determine the ultimate impact on the gaming community. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the complexities of this collaboration and its implications for GTA 6 and the modding community. Let's unpack this a bit more. The whole monetization story got its moment in the spotlight during an earnings report where Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick spilled the beans. He essentially said, if folks are messing around with our intellectual property, why not make a buck or two? It's a straightforward business move, really. Taking a page from the unprecedented success of GTA Online, it seems like Rockstar caught a glimpse of how these free servers could turn into a money-making machine. Now the potential downside of this situation lies in the realm of competition. Rockstar's got its A-team working on the custom server's gig. That means anyone outside the Rockstar circle trying to whip up something akin to 5M is practically painting a target on themselves for a cease and desist. Let's face it, Rockstar might have eyed this strategic move with 5M from the get-go. However, with those servers gaining crazy popularity and the game becoming a sensation on Twitch and YouTube, shutting it down wouldn't have been the smart play. Instead, they pulled off a masterstroke, acquiring the team behind the biggest servers, effectively cornering the market and positioning themselves to profit from any potential imitators. Now, with GTA 6 on the horizon and servers in the works, Rockstar's sitting pretty. Some in the gaming community are even giving them a nod for finally throwing a bone to the community. But, and there's always a but, at the end of the day, Rockstar's the one making the rules. We'll all have to toe the line because, quite frankly, there won't be any other alternatives in the neighborhood. 
So buckle up for Rockstar's GTA roleplay. It's going to be a wild ride. The landscape has already witnessed the repercussions, with servers and mods being handed the shutdown ticket for not playing by Rockstar's latest rulebook. The new mandates include a strict no to real-life vehicles, mission mods, and porting old Rockstar maps or assets rules that weren't in the playbook just a couple of years back. Now, while the financial backing from a mega corporation might seem like a savvy move on the surface, there's a lingering skepticism about whether it'll blossom into the fairy tale ending we've all been envisioning. It's a bit premature to slap a final verdict on the fate of 5M once GTA 6 hits the stage. Now, let's consider the potential repercussions for the vibrant RP community. While the partnership between Rockstar and 5M could bring about positive changes, there's an underlying worry within the RP enthusiasts. The fear is that with increased control and potential monetization, the organic and immersive RP experiences that players have come to love might face disruptions. RP communities thrive on creativity, flexibility, and a sense of autonomy. If Rockstar's influence leads to more rigid guidelines, it could alter the dynamic of these communities, potentially affecting the unique narratives and interactions that make RP servers so engaging. As we contemplate the potential impact, it's essential to look beyond the immediate horizon of GTA 6. The dynamics established through this collaboration could set a precedent for future interactions between gaming giants and modding communities across various games. Whether it becomes a model to be emulated or a cautionary tale will be closely watched by both players and industry stakeholders. The future of 5M and the broader modding community remains uncertain as GTA six inches closer to release. While concerns exist, there's also room for hope. The collaboration might lead to a harmonious blend of official support and community-driven creativity, enhancing the gaming experience for everyone involved. As players, content creators, and modders navigate this uncharted territory, the one constant is the love for the game and the shared hope for a positive evolution in the gaming landscape. Taking a stroll down memory lane, Rockstar's track record with monetization doesn't exactly calm the nerves. Add to that the current scenario where they're laying down the law for the CFX team, dictating what's permissible and what's not. This conjures up a cloud of uncertainty regarding the future of both 5M servers and the broader modding community. GTA 6 has been announced, and it's caused a whole bunch of rumors to swirl around. We've got a list of stuff that's actually confirmed for the game, so let's dive in. Now, the game isn't coming out anytime soon. Rockstar Games is still working hard on it. But thanks to some leaks, we've got some inside info on what to expect. We're talking vehicles, game physics, and the main characters, Lucia and Jason. Plus, we've got details on the map, the huge open world, activities, and all the weapons you can play with. There's also a bunch of cool stuff going on with NPC AI, RPG elements, and some new gameplay features. People are pretty hyped about all this, and they're chatting up a storm about what GTA 6 is going to be like. Now, let's check out the vehicles in the game. The GTA forums did a solid job gathering this info, so shout out to them. So we've got confirmed vehicles like the Blista Compact, Ocelot Locust, and something that looks like a 90s Buick Skylark. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. There are a bunch of other cars too, without official names, like a 90s Chevy Caprice, a 2016, present Chevy Malibu, a Chevy Sonic, and a 2018 to 2022 Honda Accord. Rockstar usually gives these cars funny names. Other rides include the Albany Primo, Benefactor Shafter LWB, something that's like a mix of Ford Explorer and Tahoe from the 90s or 2000s, a 2018, present Toyota or RAV4, with Lexus NX vibes and a Mercedes grille, the Pegasi Tauros, a 1980s Jeep CJA Scrambler, a 5th Gen F150, a G20 conversion van, a Brute Camper, a Vapid Speedo, h Mixer, Metro Mover, D-Class Sheriff SUV, Mobatsu Sanchez Livery, Nagasaki Street Blazer, a 1970s Ford Ranchero, a 1971 Buick Estate, an Albany Emperor, D-Class Turbo Sabre, Yoga Classic, The Contender, and Saddler. And don't forget the Slam Van Pickup, Bobcat XL, an updated Regina, Alpha, Gauntlet Classic, Moonbeam Helion, Boxville Go Postal, an unknown Albany car that's based on a 1959-60 Cadillac, a Rebel, some Asian sedan, Ferrasi or Ferroci, Boller, Novak, Buffalo STX, Alpha and Fudo, a Benson, NF890, Buffalo with no sports bumper, and the Stanier and Landstalker. With all these vehicles, GTA 6 is going to be quite the ride. Now let's talk about some gameplay clips making the rounds on social media. They give us a sneak peek at missions and what Rockstar is up to. 
you. One clip shows Lucia, our main character, trying to rob a place called Hank's Waffles, a diner. In this early test, the non-player characters look kinda generic and are jokingly called dummies in the game. The NPCs react to Lucia's aggressive moves, and their animations show they're pretty freaked out, kind of like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. During the robbery, Lucia can aim her gun at a hostage, giving you the choice to rob or have a face-off. Taking a hostage adds some spice to the crime. Jason, the other protagonist, is there too, and you can interact with both characters during the heist. Jason pushes Lucia to hurry up and make a clean getaway, hinting at a Bonnie and Clyde-style partnership, which lines up with earlier leaks about the game's story. People are even saying that Lucia and Jason look like Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling from the Place Beyond the Pines movie, but we're not sure if the game's story will follow a similar path. Lucia and Jason look like they're in their late 20s. You can switch between them in the game using the controller's D-pad. When the cops show up, Lucia can threaten another hostage, and it leads to a face-off with the police outside. The outdoor area looks like it's inspired by Northern Florida with all the greenery. While trying to escape, Lucia and Jason rack up two wanted stars, but instead of a shootout, they skillfully maneuver through parked cars and hijack a police cruiser. You can tell it's an early part of the game from the tutorial-like prompts, including one about the police getting smarter and remembering cars involved in crimes. The clip ends with Lucia driving off in the stolen police car, and Jason assures her they can shake the cops. But their getaway ends with an accidental crash at an old car wash. In the next mission, Jason and Lucia hit up a strip club called Jack of Hearts and run into Dre, who's chatting with another lady. Dre talks about his music dreams and hints at someone named Boopy. During this chat, we get messages from two new contacts, Billy and R.B. Shaw, through a WhatsApp parody. The early footage shows a minimap that looks like the one in GTA V, with icons that probably stand for missions from characters labeled WM and YJ. As they head up to the VIP second floor, Dre has a run-in with DJ Tip, who's upset about waiting for drinks. Dre steps in, but it's clear that Tip isn't the most popular guy. Dre moves on, and that's where the clip ends. Just remember, this is early development footage, and things might change as the game gets closer to release. Another leak spills the beans on more than 500 world events, encounters, and easter eggs you'll come across while playing. There's too much to cover, but I'll mention a few interesting ones. You'll find stuff like missing tourists, yard sales with new clothes, an event that's a bit like the insurance fraud thing in Saints Row, a voice in the storm drain that might remind you of Pennywise, a Bonnie and Clyde mystery that spans different places, and a workout challenge that suggests fitness activities are back. Players can also stumble upon an island camp, DUI tests, UFO sightings, an animal house, a swamp safari, and even the possibility of playing some crazy golf. There's a hint that the basketball court might be back too. Events like fishing, Satanist houses, backyard wrestling rings, and mansions with big cats offer a bunch of different experiences in the game world. Now, let's talk about the main locations in Grand Theft Auto 6. Ambrosia has Ambrosia Farms and the Tarmac. Bayside Copperhead, the Everglades or Grass Rivers, Fairyland and Fairyland Forest offer different environments. The Keys region includes places like East Key, Low Key, and spots like a garage, gas station, and liquor store. Lake Okeechobee has a motel, prison, and racetrack, while Little Haiti, North Beach, and North Miami come with places like gas stations, hideouts, and liquor stores. Port Gellhorn offers a variety of spots to explore, like an abandoned building, basketball court, beach, bingo hall, bowling alley, car wash, fishing store, fruit stand, gas station, motel, pawn shop, police station, quick shop, raceway, soccer field, and trailer park. Red Hill has a forest, South Beach features a boardwalk, gym, hotel, ocean drive and park. South Miami Sundown includes a beach and tarmac, and Vice Beach covers Vice City suburbs and Washington Beach. There are also other interesting places like an abandoned hotel, observatory, fountain of youth, homeless community, Malibu Club, Monument of Leonida, Redneck Yacht Club, Spaceship House, Underwater Research Facility, and Dinosaur World. According to info from the GTA forums, Grand Theft Auto 6's open world is estimated to be at least two and a half times the size of GTA 5 ES, giving players a massive world to explore. The game seems to take cues from the successful approach in Red Dead Redemption 2. Promising a well-designed open world with intriguing mysteries. We've spotted some real-life Florida locations in GTA 6's development footage, like the Homestead Miami Speedway turned into the Port Gellhorn racetrack, and recognizable places such as Portofino Tower, Sombrero Key Light, Solar Amphitheater Bayfront Park, and Lone Depot Park. Even the 1000 Museum, a high-rise condo in Miami, is in the game, showing Rockstar's attention to detail. A metro map that's a match for Miami's real one suggests a deep immersion in the game world. The lush landscapes and greenery might hint at a move into Georgia 
closure, but that's just speculation until we get official word. Details like the Vice City Neighborhood Police Department resembling the Miami Beach Police Department show Rockstar's creativity and world design. As always, we're waiting for official announcements to see how all these elements come together in the final game. Until then, the mystery of Grand Theft Auto 6 keeps fans excited. There's a recent leak suggesting that Alexandra Christina Ekavari could be the voice behind Lucia in Grand Theft Auto 6. Her voice from a demo reel seems to match up with Lucia's leaked dialogue. We've covered a ton of info about Grand Theft Auto 6, from gameplay details to new features. It's important to remember that the game might still be a couple of years away from release, so we'll have to be patient. Now, let's dig into some interesting findings from the leaked clips. We see Jason and his pals hanging out by an in-ground pool in a lower-income neighborhood, cracking jokes about a parody of social media called Life Invader. It's all about brain downloading and poking fun at Jay Norris's demise, classic Grand Theft Auto humor. The leaked clips also give us a peek into early police AI testing, showing NPCs using cover better during gunfights. In one scene, Jason robs a diner worker with an assault rifle, and we see some dialogue options that look like they're from Red Dead Redemption 2, but they might just be placeholders. Jason's new ability to go prone is a fresh addition to the franchise, and a scene in a thrift or antique shop hints at the option for robbery, maybe even a place to sell stolen items, which adds depth to the gameplay. There are animation tests for Lucia and Jason, doing stuff like jogging, stopping, and ducking to avoid gunfire. Rockstar's developers also tested vehicle crashing physics, with a car driving over an overpass. Highway signs mention North Beaches and Lake Leonida on Interstate 97, with the current exit leading to Washington Beach. In another scene, Jason stumbles upon a shipping container full of cash and a motorbike. Various development clips show changes to the inside of a vehicle, suggesting new vehicle designs or customization options for players. Throughout the clips, there are various interactions with NPCs in the open world, like characters taking selfies, which makes the game's world feel more immersive. Another mechanic borrowed from Red Dead Redemption 2 is the ability for characters to pick up and carry bodies, adding depth to the gameplay. We also see other influences from Red Dead Redemption 2 in different aspects of the game. The weapon wheel system is similar to Red Dead Redemption 2 with limited weapons and items you can carry. Lucia has a loot bag that might be used for robberies or stealing stuff from different places. The inventory system lets players hang on to health kits and other items for temporary buffs, and Jason can pick up and drop weapons from his inventory. In one scene, Jason enters a gang member's territory and takes cover behind a truck, and we see unique animations for characters reacting to getting shot. There's a mention of a jetpack that was previously leaked by Tom Henderson, and it's inside the Jack of Hearts Club. The game includes parody logos for social media like Snapchat, Instagram, and Life Invader. Characters have different hairstyles, and there are realistic details, like Lucia's bra showing under her shirt, which adds to the game's realism. A new feature is the ability for players and NPCs to hold their guns sideways, which changes things up in combat. We also see Jason doing some fancy rifle tricks in the air, and another character in a parking lot shoots at him while holding his pistol sideways. The clips mention animations like Overdose, which hints at unique actions or events in the game. There are hints of horses and horse riding mechanics, likely inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2. The open world is packed with places to explore, like motels, metro stations, restaurants, pawn shops, and supermarkets. Small details, like being able to get a gumball from a quick shop machine, add to the overall experience. The game adds RPG elements, like managing food, drinks, sweat, fatigue, and even taming animals, which gives players a deeper gameplay experience. There are references to mountain bike ramps and city bike rentals, promising fun cycling activities. The leaked clips talk about loads of weapons, from regular firearms like pistols, shotguns, and rifles, to unusual ones like golf clubs, baseball bats, and crowbars. Players can also use tools like flashlights, binoculars, and lockpicks. Players can stay in motels and hotels, with the Kington Hotel as one option. There's even a pool party with live music for players to attend. References to the Everglades and wildlife like alligators, snakes, raccoons, and birds hint at diverse and unique environments to explore. A cool addition is the ability to shoot while swimming, which adds a new twist to combat situations. With all these elements, Grand Theft Auto 6 promises to be an immersive and engaging gaming experience.